Here we are, Painkiller Already, episode 208, being recorded on Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Yep. We, uh, we, we're all full of turkey, I think. Uh, At turkey. I'm a little yeah. sleepy. Right. I, I'm pretty drowsy from the, the tryptophan. Is it tryptophan? Is that what I'm looking for? Uh, it it, is. If that's not it, it's so close I can't tell the difference. It's one of those brain chemicals making me all sleepy from all the turkey I ate. But, uh, but first, I want to get to our sponsor. We are proud to have Crunchyroll back again as our as the sponsor of our show. You want to go to crunchyroll.com slash PKA. You should have a graphic up there showing you right where you want to go. As we've said before, they are the Netflix of anime. This is the one stop. They're better than the an Netflix of anime, we decided, because they. it's They're not current. the anime of 2010. It's the anime of last night, 2014, or whatever the... the Whenever you're watching is. this. It's yeah. last night. <laughs> It's an hour old. The content you're getting, you know, they, they it's all professionally. Um, um, what am I looking for? Captioned, uh, which means you've actually. I'd, I'd like to talk to one of those guys. I think he'd be a cool interview just to talk to him about his job. He sits there, this bilingual person watches all of this anime all day, every day. I would assume, and then he uh, he's typing the captions for us English viewers. So the thing airs in Japan, and only an hour later, you've got it on Crunchyroll.com. Uh, everything's yeah. in 1080p, regardless of what device you're watching it on. Whether it's a, it's an Apple device, an Android, you can watch it on your Roku, your Apple TV, your Xbox, pretty much anything and everything. And uh, there's a lot of great uh, titles on there. We we meant to do the whole PKA watches uh, Attack on Titan or uh, one of the other series and like get you guys together, but it's been kind of a holiday weekend. I know everybody's been running around, and uh, it just didn't happen. But we're gonna make that happen, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. For sure. So I don't know what we're gonna watch. There's tons of titles on there. There, as we keep mentioning, there is Naruto Shippuden. <laughs> there's uh, there's Attack on Titan. There's uh, General Sal's Revenge. There's Sword Art Online. Uh, Fate Stay Destiny. Parasite. Uh, Log Horizon Two. Um, what, there was another one. What, what was it, Taylor? Uh, oh God, what was it? Uh, Kikoman's tail? A Kikoman's tail? <laughs> Kikoman's revenge. Kikoman's revenge. Oh no, it was General Sal's revenge. Oh, Kikoman's revenge. Uh, a tale of General Sal. <laughs> that, those were the yes. ones we got, we got confused. That was my favorite one. It was very high action, um, very tasty. I liked it a lot. Um, so once again, Crunchyroll.com/pka. Go on there, and you get a free month of this amazing service. You don't have to pay right up front. They're going to let you test it before you drive it. So go check them out. See what you think of it. And maybe they will earn your. Uh, I think it's only like six dollars a month, something like that. Six or seven bucks a month. Maybe they'll earn your business after you're exposed to the incredible high-level anime yeah. that they have over there. To me, very high. Naruto is a bit childish, you know. I, I think Naruto should, Shibuti! I think we should start with Death Note, move on to Attack on Titan, then Psychopath, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood. Uh, never watch uh, Full Metal Alchemist; just the Brotherhood version. The normal version doesn't follow the source material. Um, and then go with La Luch, <laughs> Rebellion R1 Season 1. <laughs> and I'm code sticking with Gilles. Gilles Revenge, man. It is, uh... <laughs> and, and watch them in that order. That's Delicious. Actually, I've been getting advice yes. over Reddit on the order that we should watch these things in. And it looks like Death Note is the one to start. Attack on Titan, which keeps burning in my head because I, I hear it's kind of American-friendly, nice place to start, is the second. And you should start with Death Note. And that's, that, I mean, if I were king, that's what we'd do. We'd start with Death Note, watch them with subs, see what the deal is. Okay. Uh, I've actually I'm, heard of Death Note before. Have you? So that's not like, you know, any of these other silly ones. Not but, to say they're silly, but yeah, they're not the from the U.S., <laughs> so I wouldn't Sal's know. Sal's Revenge is a classic. But, I uh, love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we should start with Death Note. We should watch it with subs, and it should be a thing. It would be fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. We'll definitely get to that. So how has everybody's Thanksgiving been? Uh, that's it's kind of what we were just talking about before we uh, we kick this thing off. I, l let me tell you about mine real quick because mine's pretty straightforward. It's uh, not I straightforward if you start at the beginning. When I was born, or no, when you ditched your parents to have Thanksgiving with kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kyle. So here's what you, happened. You ditched yeah. the fan. Oh, you guys here's thank me for this story. Carry on, Kyle. So last, uh, the last two years I spent with um, uh, my girlfriend, who I'm no longer with, with her family and doing their whole big like family thing, which was cool and everything, but you know it's a bit stressful. I'm not with her anymore, so obviously not doing that this year. It'd be weird if I showed up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this time around, um, I'm with my, my, my new girlfriend, and I decided I, – let me, let me rewind a, a little bit. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. So what happened was I was at my parents' house. I was talking to my dad about building some stuff, 
And my mom was there, and she walked by, and she's like, hey, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You know, we're going to do this, this, and that. You should come. You should bring Kitty, bring uh, bring whoever you want to bring. And uh, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I think Kitty and I are going to do this Thanksgiving. Just just she and I, we're going to do a thing. And because, uh, you know, I figured Kitty's, Kitty's here, and uh, she doesn't. her family's in England, and her husband's away at sea, so I was going to do Thanksgiving with Kitty. And, I cert- and, and my mom was like, well, bring her with you. And I was like, nah, I don't want to drag Kitty into our whole like family thing, and you know, your sister it, it would beat just... her up. <laughs> I I don't think that. She's like happened, a feral cat. <laughs> her husband is away at sea. What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's a submariner. He's somewhere in the waves, li- listening for mines or some some bullshit. Anyway, um, I, I was like, no, mom. Me and Kitty, we're gonna do our own Thanksgiving thing. Don't worry. Like I, I don't even know what my girlfriend's doing. I think she's gonna do it with her family. Me and Kitty are gonna do our own little thing. You and Dad and Kelly, you go do your little thing. So, it turned out uh, I got back and I was like, Kitty, Thanksgiving, me and you, what's happening? She's like, Hey, I decided to fly over to Colorado. <laughs> I wanna do Thanksgiving there. I was like, Oh, really? You're gonna fly to Colorado and leave me here? Yeah, they can't go off to Colorado. They had a very nice, uh, very cheap ticket. It's only $300 first class. Very nice, very nice. I was like, oh, they didn't have two of those really nice tickets? <laughs> maybe <laughs> on the whole fucking airplane or like maybe a different airliner? Hang on, let me check. Oh, no, I just thought, you know, I've got to spend the holiday with some friends in and all. I was like, oh, all right. Well, I told my parents that I'd be with you, so I guess I'll just, just stay here and... I'll probably cry, but don't worry. I, I won't bother you with that. I'll, I'll just sort of keep the pain on the inside and just wallow it down in my loneliness because I certainly can't go back to my parents now and be like, I would have. Turned out. Turned out. Kiki yeah, you decided like to get out to Colorado. No, they'd have been cool with it. I, nobody would have like given me shit about it. It's not like I live with a... Except Kelly. Like, it's not a sitcom. Fuck her. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my uh, my girlfriend and I decided we would do our own Thanksgiving thing right here. She did one with her family previously, and then today um, she got up early and started cooking like all my favorite things. And then um, I got up and uh, I cooked the turkey. I deep fried it, so you've got like a huge you've got five gallons of 350 degree oil boiling, and then you lower the turkey down in, and it was delicious. It came out super good and like really. Can delicious she cook? Thing. Yeah. She doesn't look like someone who can cook. She can cook. What the? I fuck? still haven't seen a picture of this broad. There was mashed potatoes with there's like garlic, chunky garlic and cheese mashed potatoes, and the the ma- the macaroni and cheese had like eight pounds of cheese in there, and she cooked all the stuffing and the giblet gravy and this like sweet potato dessert with candied pecans and marshmallows on top, all caramelized and shit. This sounds and, dreadful. Why did you try to break up with this girl? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um. Yeah, it's dreadful. She's beautiful, and she's really great at sex and cooking. I'm out of here. Those conversations must be brutal if it was almost pushing you past the point of <laughs> looking past all that. Like it must have been a whole new level of boring and insipid nonsense. So, you know, it's just... What can I, what can I say? Regardless, the uh, Thanksgiving went well. Food came out great. Uh, everything was really delicious. So I've enjoyed myself. I'm a little little drowsy, like I said, from the trip to fans. So I got myself some coffee here. But I'm curious about you two. How was your Thanksgiving? Anything interesting? Anything out of the ordinary? Big one, small one, turkey, ham, all, both. Like like, what do you do? You know, I wish I had a story like yours. We ate with um, uh, like so. My family is friends with another family, and I like the dad, and Jackie likes the mom, and the the kids are all nice. A little awkward in that it's Hope's ex boyfriend. <laughs> you know, that's the <laughs> level of the co family friendship, but uh, but they're cool, you know, with each other and such, and um, uh, and, and I guess we just hung out. And it was kind of standard outside of that. It was a real casual thing. Colin, um. Colin's been Colin's into stacking stuff, and uh, he made a bunch of tall domino pyramids and house of cards, and house of cards with dominoes set up on top of the house of cards. The kids got skill, and that's the sort of thing that we did. Cool. I, I what beat, turkey? Yeah, uh, turkey, mashed potatoes. There were three different pies: apple, chocolate mousse pie, and pumpkin pie. Uh, green beans. Uh, p- gr- Stuffing, that's what I'm searching for. I don't know. All the all the good Thanksgiving stuff. 
I forgot to mention my pies. There were four pies. They were fried For pies. For the two of you, yeah, naturally. There was a German chocolate pie, which um, there was a peach pie, an apple pie, and a cherry pie. And I have yet to eat the apple and cherry pies. I only ate two of the pies, so <laughs> I, I held back. She was. We, we saw a thing that said that most people eat three to five thousand calories. <laughs> That's how much dessert I'm gonna have. Like, <laughs> we're hitting ten k today. I had. Two I only. Plates. Had, <laughs> I had. I, I didn't. I don't mean to pick on Wayne. He was saying that he didn't really chew on his diet much. He, you know, just a couple extra plates, you know, with his meals here and there. <laughs> and uh, and that's burned into my head so irreversibly. Like, whenever I'm hungry, I'm like, Wings would eat second plates in this situation. And uh, I eat second plates sometimes, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And after I filled up, I was like, yeah, it's Thanksgiving, baby. Two plates. When so I, I went back. From I took a picture. That's a good way of my... to look at it. Like I would feel like a real piece of shit if after every meal, I was like, "All right, first half's done," and then you go load up your plate again, as everybody's watching you. Like, of course, Mister Two Plates, just get him a <laughs> fucking trough. I started with two. I started with two. This was my first helping. Hold that up. Wait, what am I looking at here? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, and at the top is that a second plate in the that in the, the poorly lit background? Just, uh, there is an entire yes, there it was. I can't help it. There, Those there was plates an, are so full you can't see plate. Yeah, and yeah, you didn't even plate, wait until the first plate was done. You had one on deck. The second <laughs> plate, nothing but stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the stuffing. My second plate was stuffing heavy too, but I didn't like it and didn't finish it. But I, I hate that when you have to pretend it to like and try a tiny little bit of everybody's. Holiday yeah. dishes, and sometimes no. they're just bad. They're just no. bad sometimes. Look, I, I, I refuse to pretend that I like something if I don't. Um, at, uh, classically, I'm known for this, and people are always like, I don't understand. Kyle never eats anything around Christmas or Thanksgiving. Why? It's like, I don't like your nasty food, bitch. <laughs> like, 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 did you notice I'm eating nothing but my mom's like mashed potatoes, turkey, and dressing? I don't want any of that other shit because you cooked it. You cooked it. It's not because you cooked it. It's because you're bad at cooking it. <laughs> you're bad at cooking yeah. it and I don't trust your hygiene. Right. I mean, so I don't, I every single cold. holiday dinner for you is just burning bridges with family members. <laughs> just oh, fuck you oh. and your green beans. You should have seen me my, Christmas with Kitty. You should have seen me my ex-girlfriend's uh, like, like, like thing. Like, like there, it's like everyone brings a different dish. So it's like it really is a thing where like everyone could feel judged. And I'll straight up say it. Somebody's th – this lady – this – my girlfriend was a very pretty girl, but some of her family members weren't, and Past some of mine tense. aren't. Your girlfriend my, was a very pretty yeah. girl, like before the fire. Yeah, I, not, she's not my girlfriend anymore. Oh, okay. Before the acid girlfriend. attack. Yeah, I was yeah. To read. Yeah, before the honor attack, after she broke yeah. up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to show her. Uh, in any case, um, I just remember like, like one of her relatives being like, "You didn't try any of this, blah blah blah," and I was like, "I don't like that." And like, oh. You don't like blah, blah, blah? And I was like, no, I just didn't like that blah, blah, blah. Didn't care for it. It was really right. salty. Didn't like it. It's not, not for that me. I hate green beans. It's those green beans right there. They're not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll straight up say it because it, food is one of those things where it's like, no, you're going to want to go back to the drawing board on this. I'm sure you'd like to know. It's like a blow job. If you do a bad job, I'm going to let you... Well, you could work on this and that, you know, maybe not so much teeth, and maybe you don't dump the whole salt in there, and maybe next time I'll eat them. But in any case, I had a great Thanksgiving this year. That's a fucking mixed metaphor, if I ever, like, just mix <laughs> them together. Fewer teeth and less salt. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> all right. Same awesome. thing to me. I'm, I'm, I, I, just, I like to be honest uh, with, with how I'm feeling about things. Um, I, oh, one thing is that, we cooked, so we cooked the turkey. She prepared the turkey. I cooked the turkey. Like I didn't want to have to be rubbing it down and uh, taking the guts out. You know, the necks in there and the giblets. I don't. Even, I'm not sure what the giblets are, but I think it's like, you know, like the heart and the liver and lungs and some stuff like that. Some stuff I don't want any part of. And they put it in a package and like wrap it up and shove it back into the bird. I don't even know why. In any case, I asked her if she took it out. I was like, Did you get the giblets, honey? She was like, I yeah, you, know, you didn't even know what they were, and you were asking if she got them out. Yeah, like, like I'm aware that it's a thing. Like, like I told, I don't know what they're composed of. I've never dissected the giblet bag, but I know there's a bag of gunk stuck in there for whatever reason. Because some people eat it, and I'm just not one of them. I, I think also they don't make a broth them. out of it, or it's part of the. They gravy. make giblet gravy out of it. Yeah, yeah they make yeah. a gravy out of it. And like, I like that, but 
I like the I like it when they take the dark meat out of the chi- out of the turkey and make make the giblet gravy out of that. It's, it's I don't want the heart, liver, and lungs or whatever the fucks in mm. there. In any case, the she took the, the neck poop. out. Yeah, she took the neck out, but she left the package of giblets with you know organs like jammed into its like little breast pocket. So I fried that shit too, and that's the <laughs> advantage when you're frying instead of baking. It's all good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, I wrapped some twine around that motherfucker to keep his wings tucked in so he'd fit in the pot. That didn't matter either. Fried it as well. Like, you could throw anything in there mid-fry. I, I like frying stuff. I'm going to keep that thing fueled up. You know, it's a big propane tank hose and the whole burner and all. And uh, I think I'm going to start frying everything now. I think it's the future. I can't see what's wrong with that plan. <laughs> Not a no, I don't thing. either. It does seem kind of... Wildly irresponsible, almost have a <laughs> what five gallon drum of hot oil constantly in your kitchen. Boiling? No, you do it outdoors. It's it's an outdoors activity. Yeah, you have got like a big uh. propane tank. I remember one winter, last winter maybe, that Wings tweeted that picture where he was keeping his house warm using one of these things. It was the the propane the the big propane tank like the cooker size, uh, you know, the regulator, the hose, the burner, which is like an enormous Bunsen burner. And it's just mm-hmm. sitting in his living room burning. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, they're going to fall asleep and die. Yeah. <laughs> tell, me about your th- tell me about your Thanksgiving. I got carried away with mine. And told oh, that's all right. Uh, really rehashing over all the same foods, all the same. Turkey and ham. We play for keys. Uh, like really just watched football. Didn't do much. Yeah. And girlfriend I, uh, went to work. The Lions won. Woot, woot. I've been Hooray. a Lions fan since I was 15. And uh, long story short, it's because I fell in love with this girl from Michigan and started pulling for her Lions. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and they sucked and at the time. Pull for them. They, they, they sucked still at the suck. time, as the Lions often do. So it was like, ah, oh, this is a good thing. No one will call me a bandwagon jumper. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's becomes a, like a, a Raiders fan right now, you're not a bandwagon. It's a good time to get on. And then you could be like, no, nah, I stuck with them through 2014. You're not, not down with the Panthers? No, I, I they play in Charlotte, which is like hours from here, and I I don't know. Yeah, the Panthers are the North Carolina team, but they're too far. No, oh. yeah. So uh, Detroit makes more sense then. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just been I don't know. I've been pulling for them forever, and I like to see them do well. Plus, I uh, like Barry Sanders, who's probably ancient history to our listeners, was the man at the time. He was really neat. Every time he held the ball, it could have been an eighty-yard run, and it was it's cool. You got a video here, Woody? That's that was racist. from a while ago. Yeah, no, that was from before oh. the show. It, it, I didn't think it was a good topic. But I do have some topics. I've got some as well. Oh, wow, he knocked that guy the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't it satisfying? Do you have the sound on? It was a yeah. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, I feel like now we should at least talk about the video a tiny sure. bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have I it all queued up. Um Son- I, I can. Uh, shucks. All right. So I'm at 159. That was the best I could do. Okay. Give me a moment and I'll do the same because I closed it and then, you know, what I did. I just saw this and was sharing it with Merca. It wasn't supposed to be a show topic, but it's not bad. Basically, that I've cut out for your benefit two minutes of preamble to the, to the event. It, it was Thanks. crap and it was boring and I could hardly take it. But suffice it to say, take it from me, this white guy is racist as hell and okay. it unequivocally uh, racist <laughs> so are we all ready yes yeah is he drunk as well he looks to be kind yes. of yeah i think he's lumbering drunk about too. he's yeah. most of the two minutes just he's talking to this girl and he's saying whose side are you on whose side are you on and she repeatedly says like i'm on his side because he's right and i can live with other people and you're drunk and belligerent and he's nice and uh, we're about to meet the nice guy. He's the younger black guy you're about to see. So ready, <laughs> set, play. What are you doing? Don't get close to me. Don't get close to me. Don't get close to me, bro. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. Okay, all right. You got oh! Harry Potter standing between them. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, leave him, man. Fuck him. Wait, and him. that's it, really. There's only about five seconds of interesting video. All right, uh, that's cool. Yeah. The guy stumbles <laughs> for a bit. I don't like that the, the drunkard immediately starts to get back up. I wish it would have knocked him cold. Hmm. <laughs> Um, hmm. Then get some of those classic street fighting moves, stomp on their head. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. All the greats, all the classics. But he definitely gets up and, I mean, he's wobbling and he's struggling, so... Yeah, he's not up. Uh, he's not good again. He's still like yeah, he's not yeah. there. He's the wild, only reason right? that he wasn't more beaten is because the people there decided that that was enough. Yeah, it's 
they clearly could have done whatever they wanted to him. So, uh, yeah. um, oh, uh, Merka's neck of the woods, your hometown, little Ferguson action. Oh yeah. I went to Ferguson high, as you guys know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> How far from Ferguson were you raised? Uh, that's North County. I was probably 25 minutes. Okay. All right. So, so people get a rough idea. They're, um, uh, a little bit of a brouhaha there recently. Yeah, a little, little snafu unfolded. I am, um, just so to speak. I've been reading all kinds of articles presenting both sides and such. Um, like it, it regarding the riots in particular. I guess we could cover the police case too. From what I hear, basically the the police were itching for a reason to put down the riot. Like at the first hint that it became you know anything other than purely peaceful the police like just squashed it maybe too harshly there are some people who say the riot got out of control because the police weren't good at calming things instead they inflamed things which you know if you harken back to the first one they kind of did that there too everybody was upset at how the police didn't really keep the peace they went to battle and i mean i watched some of the the live stream like actual people walking around with their cameras and everything while it was happening mm -hmm. the first night. And just to get it out there, I did not watch the whole thing unfold. Because I know some people were streaming it even from like when the, the verdict was being announced and people were obviously being peaceful then. But from what I saw, which is I guess like an hour, hour and a half after that when it was getting dark, there were just a huge mob of people screaming at the cops, doing like, but it wasn't like violent or anything at first. It was just kind of like the same Wall Street, like, you know, Occupy Wall Street, like, you're part of the system, man. You're you're the problem. How do you shame? Shame! It's like, oh my god, these embarrassing children yelling. And uh, of course, there are like all those people there. And then there are the people who just want to fuck shit up. So they start showing footage of people rioting. And this is a little later. And it wasn't like a spur of the moment, like, oh, hot damn, let's get something for free. It was like some people had sledgehammers and like riot equipment <laughs> with them. And so they said, <laughs> about this and they were like let's go do this they like set a car dealership on fire uh, O'Reilly they, they, they looted an O'Reilly's I don't know how you set a car dealership on fire there was a parking lot that had multiple inflamed cars right or car yeah. set of flame uh, you can't do that with a lighter like did they did they pour gas on like how did that happen I guess so I, I don't know the first thing I saw burning on the stream was some cop car Mm -hmm. And, of course, the person holding the camera is like, these are just, you know, retaliatory agents sent by police to make us look bad. And it's like, my God, dude, this is unbelievable. Like, how, <laughs> well you're throwing, like, how far you're willing to stretch it to make it seem like these are innocent protesters. Uh, and a lot of them are, but not all of them. That's but, the thing. There were a few people who really made the rest look bad. Oh, and, and actually, there are a lot of people who made like the rest look bad. It was a lot more than a few. Because a lot of people just came out, didn't give two fucks about the, the indictment or lack thereof. They just wanted stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they, I say a few people made the rest look bad, it sounds like there were six bad people. There weren't. There were a hundred or more. Oh, many. Yeah. Yeah. It's who uh, robbed a fucking uh, O'Reilly's? Like, like that's so ridiculous. They and the, and of course they trashed the uh, the guy. Um, you know the guy. Uh, the convenience store where the the guy stole the cigars. Oh yeah, yeah that was yeah. sad. That picture of that little leadership. Indian man. They, they, like, it, if people want to change in Ferguson. Then there has to be a leader that sort of organizes this stuff, like a Martin Luther King type figure, who says, you know, look, we will not be ignored. We have a real problem here, and we want to see real change. And then they can do it through voting, and they can do it through community action and such. But when hundreds of people steal hair care products, right, just because it's a free for all thing, then you're almost proving the police point that like you need to be put down and controlled. When hundreds of people set a dealership on fire, when <laughs> when ridiculous shit happens, then uh, yeah, I'm just kind of looking at Kyle's link. Danny I've DeVito got some. Here. I've actually got an image uh, from Always Ferguson. Sunny. Bit of bit of daytime <laughs> looting. It appears Danny DeVito is there. He's got some, <laughs> he's got some gear that he's uh, that he's taking with him. Some, looks like some skis. <laughs> 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 and that's that's like so it's uh, speakers I, being taken if people are looking for a change wrecking that quickie mart wreck you know stealing stuff from the hair care place setting the cars on fire it it makes the rest of the world think you need a stronger police force yeah yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. And like at this point, with a community, how poor that community is, it's like they just burn down a ton of local businesses. Yeah, a ton and if of I'm a local business, I, I, yeah, if I'm the owner, I can like my insurance money and I find a nicer area where, the, where, where my local customers and the people who I'm supporting by paying my taxes in their area don't burn my shit down for something I had nothing to fucking do with. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, and at this point, it's like, it's almost like there's no coming back from yeah, it. It doesn't unless, matter like, whether a lot whether of change. Like, there's no way they're going to come back. It'll continue to be a poor community that has problems like this because it's just sabotaging itself. But whether you agree with the the, the grant, what the grand jury said or not, whether you think the cop should have been indicted or whether you're happy that he didn't and, and you think it's all kosher, what they did is in no way the way to get anything done. I think Obama said no. something along those lines. He was like, "I've never seen a." a an immigration or health care or any other kind of bill get passed because a car got burned. Like, that's not how this, that's not how it works. Get, yeah. And, it's, He's exactly and a cop right. got shot that night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there yeah, was, I, and most of it was in Ferguson, but, like, I think the cop got shot in University City, in, which is, like, in in south, right? close to Central West End. No, that's in, that was in St. Louis, so Ferguson. Oh, oh Minneapolis is where that person got run over. Oh yes, I didn't. I didn't see that. Well, you're yeah. in luck. I have some video. <laughs> now, 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 I will say this. Now, I could definitely imagine how incredibly frustrating it would be to just have a mob of people in front of me stopping me from going where I want to go. It's literally traffic, except you have someone to blame. That's that's what it is. Like normally, in traffic, you're just like, fuck this <clears throat> coinc- this thing that happens every day with congestion. But in this Ooh, case, live like, leak. It's gonna be good. Tell oh, me it's when good. you're queued up at zero. Car drives through crowd of protesters. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, just to be clear, this isn't in Ferguson. This is in Minneapolis, and it was one of those. Uh, I don't know what else to call it, like a sympathy protest. A protest broke out in different cities around the country, but you know, this this wasn't in Ferguson. This was hundreds of miles away, but it yeah. was about that event. You guys ready? Yep. Ready. I'm ready to go. Play. Oh, right off the bat with this one. <laughs> yeah. It goes on for a little bit. So, oh, wow. and I have another one that shows another video angle, which I think is a lot better. For you audio-only listeners, right off the bat, the car tried to drive through a crowd of people and, like, push one over. And uh, now there's, like, I don't know, 30 people beating on the car and hundreds of people nearby. I see a small child in the crowd. Bring your kids to protest day. <laughs> Look. All right, all right. So that yeah, was one. That's pretty funny. The car but, just accelerated through this crowd of people. Yeah. At one point, it stops after it's run one person over and sort of parked on their legs, and the crowd begins to beat the glass out of the uh, car, and then it accelerates again and just rolls through the rest of them. Do you have the second angle? I do. Are you ready? I mean, yes. It, it's linked in the chat. Oh, and the YouTube one. Uh, I, yes, oh, Google this is a chat. much better angle. Ooh, yeah, I, I do. Bird's eye view. I came prepared, baby. Are you guys ready? I mean, Queued up at zero? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Set. I'm ready to go. Play. All right. So this one I don't think has any audio, a, but you can see the car. At you the can't top just there wander around the road the like center. this. Like the entire four-way stop is crowded. Every crosswalk is full of people who have nothing yeah. better to do than ruin people's days. And there's and the now, same this, woman this see under the beacon car. of justice. Oh, wait this a minute year. now. Yeah, this is kind of shitty. They wouldn't get out of the fucking way. She yeah. stood there in front of the car and took it. Yeah. yeah, they stood in, in that person's way, and she boldly drove through, heroically. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now she's being assaulted for her heroism. For her heroism. She, and she's like, you want some more? Because I got 190 horsepower in this little piece of shit, and you got a point two. Dude, you I you sometimes... Take my Ford Escort? I daydream about this situation. I'm playing it again for the stream. But it's like, you know, why did Woody stop? Oh, oh, I see. He shifted into four-wheel drive. Well, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> he was locking the differential. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He wanted it's, to really be able to mount that crowd. Yeah, it's just time to grind and grind. Those, those but, chariot I, spikes on my car, if I ever have the opportunity to drive through an area like that. Like those Ben-Hur running into the side of you. Know, those chariots. I, removing I, I know, limbs. It seems like a couple of the cars didn't get that if they had gone to, let me see, yeah, their left. They could have gone around the crowd. You know, there's mm-hmm. two cars that went around the crowd you know, kind of cleverly. This person found himself in the crowd. And le- as you can see, the crowd made no effort to kind of get out of the street. They were there to block traffic. That was their job. A couple people are hopping on the hood. I mean, I'm, I'm looking. There's at least two people on the hood, maybe three. Yeah. People and, all uh, over the car. 
Yeah, and then they just start like beating fucking zombies. the car. Yeah. yeah, then they start mobbing it. Now, when they start beating the car, whoever's in this car can do whatever they want. Like, like they could set the self destruct off for all I care. <laughs> but my, what I have an issue with is like the initial nudge doesn't bother me. You really gave that first person a a, a a knocking over, but that person seemed to want it. Like, the sh I, I don't need know, to look man. again. I want to say that, as they're giving the three first person times. a nudge, isn't there two more people on the hood hitting it? Yeah, the, yeah. There's, there's literally three people on the hood while the person is getting ran down. It's, it's probably it would have been hard to tell that somebody went under the tires. There's three or four more on the hood. Like, they should have gotten the fuck oh, out of yeah, the way. Yeah, they yeah. Are. They're definitely yeah. jumping on the hood long before she's like driving anyone over. She has no. She can't see the person that she hit because there's two yeah, people there's on the three hood. Three people on the hood, or two people on the hood. And it looks like they put some sort of giant piece of paper across the front windshield, like maybe a protest sign. Mm -hmm. Immediately, they tried to blind the driver. I, yeah. I don't know. It's this, and, on the and if hood. this were on like CNN, they'd be like saying crazed mad woman tries to hurt people just carrying groceries across the street to the homeless center or <laughs> something like that. Like, the, the ridiculous way they're portrayed when, like, you can just see in the video there, they were putting cardboard up, trying to fuck with her, jumping on their car. Like, yeah. what do you expect someone to do there? They don't, then you start beating on their car on the side. Imagine yourself in that situation. You oh, get yeah. pulled out, it's going to be like, what was it? Like that, that Rodney King beating. What was that guy's name? He got oh, pulled out of the truck when he stopped. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's the L.A. Riots. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. The yeah, the L.A. Riots. That guy got the shit kicked out of him. He didn't have anything brick. to do with they anything. They bricked him in the face. They hit him with a yeah. brick and fucked him up. Yeah. That's a very... You're not going to get me out of my car. Something you want to avoid. Yeah, Reginald it, Denny. You're definitely not going to get me out of my car, but I, I don't like that she kind right. of... She did start pushing on that crowd. She, I, I wouldn't have pushed that crowd. I don't know. Car. I think the crowd hopped on her car as soon as if she If the crowd hops on my car, you're getting ran over. That's what happened. Yeah, it, you've got watching. a nicer car than that. She pulled I don't up to the, the crowd. Car. She pulled up to the crowd, and the crowd started hopping on the car and hitting it. That's what happened. And as soon as that happened, she's driving through the crowd. It. it you looking at it now? I'm uh Oh, I've watched it five times. Yeah, I, I yeah. I, I think she's really innocent. What is Kyle linking here? I'm linking. Yeah. This is a completely different thing. Uh, she she did start pushing through the crowd a lot more quickly and aggressively than I can imagine myself doing. But then again, I wasn't there, so I don't know how much adrenaline is going through your system. When yeah, they already sm after they smash your windshield, you're probably like, well, I'm going to ride yeah. you over now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to $500. Uh, we need the, to exchange insurance information. I want to talk about the, um, <laughs> the verdict, right? So the, it, yeah. Here's the thing. People are looking towards uh, Michael Brown. Michael Brown is the, uh, is the what is he 290 pounds or 390 pounds like big strong muscular young guy who just did a strong arm robbery for a couple swisher or cigarellos and uh, he was walking down the middle of the street cigarellos in hand uh, the, the cop tells him to get out of the street and then there was some sort of fight and you know there was a fight because the cop's face was bruised up they had punched him in the back of the head a couple times and punched him in the face a couple times so there was some sort of fight and then I don't know what happened after that. Like, I, I'm a little foggy on these details, which, of course, won't prevent me from spouting my opinion all over the Internet. That's, that's how the Internet works. But he had just gotten into a fight, and his face was bruised up. He'd clearly been... He, he, the cop lost the fight. And But the other guy was, like, 30 feet or 100 feet away when he shot him. So how did that situation work out? And by the way, he shot him in the front. So, you know, the, the Michael Brown friend douchebag guy who made up the lie about how he, like, got on his knees and had his hands up and he got shot in the back execution style. There's no way he could have actually thought that when he was telling the story because there were no bullets in the back. And that's not a kind of detail that you screw up, right? Like, if he had gotten the color of the cop's hat wrong, all right. But... No, he was like, he got down on his knees, he put his hands up, he said don't shoot, the cop shot him in the back, execution style. Did he not know they'd autopsy the body? Mm -hmm. That to me was the most, like, the most critical part of this thing. The guy was shot in the front, and the guy had just beat up the cop. The cop, you know, they showed the photos, I saw the bruises in the head and all that stuff. Um, so the cop lost, he beat up the cop and then he got shot in the front and the cop said he feared that he was going to get beat up more. You know, who knows what would have happened the second go around. The distance thing bothers me a little bit. Like if he I was don't on... think it was a hundred feet. I was reading just what, uh, what the Associated Press released, like all the information and evidence okay. or at least all they're going to release about what the grand jury was given. 
And just going off, like if your doesn't know about the case at all, and you just read the grand jury, like the evidence they were given, it seems pretty obvious that he he didn't like murder him. He uh-huh. was assaulted, and get the then fought back. But I do know what you mean. Like the whole the Michael Brown or Ru- Brown running away and then turning back around and then running at the cop again. It's like it is. I'll, he did just you know have armed robbery on his rap sheet just 15 minutes prior, so it's, I wouldn't put it past someone. Right. But it does kind of iffy. Yeah, I don't understand how the the actual altercation between him and the cop went down. and But, but I do any- know that a lot of the people who incited the real anger were full of shit. You know, the, the, the whole story, my daughter passionately argued that this guy got shot in the back, that he was you know on his knees and it was execution style and all that stuff. Because that was the narrative that was put out by the people who were on the scene. And it was like 30 words against the policeman. But now the autopsy is back. And I trust the autopsy. I, I hope I, it's justified. And uh, it's like, oh, all those people were lying. Like lying full of shit motherfuckers. Just like inciting a riot. Causing all this, you know, the, the property damage and the people and the cop that got shot. All because these liars didn't tell the story accurately. If they had said, look, this really sucked, man. He beat up the cop, but it was over. And, you know, then the cop shot him anyway. I think he came to and he was pissed. And that would have been one thing. But Yeah. You messed up your story, man. Like, you'd get it right. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Like, uh, I... The, the, Sorry, it's hard to, to justify, in my mind, that whole thing where, like, he... He runs away from the cop. He, like, he beats the guy up and they get separated. And then there's a, a part where he, like puts his head down and sort of charges him like a bull, apparently. Because, you know, there's bullet holes in the top of his head, and the, it, it looks like he was, like, head down charging at the cop. Um, I don't I think the distances are exaggerated. Who knows what kind of, like... You've seen fights on YouTube, like, when people are actually in a street fight. Like, weird shit happens. Like, people spin around, and they're facing different directions, and uh-huh. it, they lose touch. Of, I don't know. Who knows what happened, but there's... What it boils down to in the end, for anyone who thinks anything about this, before you can form an opinion, what happened was they asked 12 people if there's probable cause to suggest that this officer act in a way that's contrary to duty, that, that, that he, he committed a crime. Is there enough probable cause here to show that this guy committed a crime, and therefore should we continue on and, and prosecute him for that crime? And by the letter of the law, there just wasn't. If so, there's no reason to burn O'Reilly's down. There's no reason to be screaming in the streets. Why don't you stop and read the grand jury testimony? Why don't you stop and look at the evidence of the case? It's a it's an unarmed black man getting shot by a white police officer, but maybe there's more to it than that. I mean, even if the cop was a fucking Ku Klux Klan member, if it was, you know, if this guy really attacked the cop and wasn't obeying orders, that doesn't make it murder, and that doesn't make the cop wrong. Like I'm, I, I fully will, will sign off on the if, if they say, oh, the cops in Ferguson are dirty, they're they're racist, they're this and that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well I'm, well this time Police though, it, state. It just, this doesn't seem like an example of that this time because this guy was a scumbag. I don't care what you say. They keep showing these pictures of this guy and it was like his graduation cap. <laughs> uh, let me show you the picture I got. Let me show. You, I, I saved it. I, I got a picture of this guy. What's his name? Something Brown. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Let me. Uh, I got a bunch of folders is on it, here. Is he in the process? <laughs> is it the security cam footage of him strong arming the? Uh... No, it's a private photo of him. I did see that. He makes that little Indian man look like a child. He yeah, d- well, he's he huge. does make the Indian man look like a child. So this says probably not the picture of Michael Brown the media will be using. Is that money in his mouth? Yep, and a gun in his hand. <laughs> and is that Hawaiian so- punch? Yep, he's got his Hawaiian punch, he's got and a bottle Amsterdam. of liquor, he's got a mouthful of money, and he's pointing his, uh, his pistol, uh, I don't know, that's a Springfield or something, at the, at, at uh-huh. the, uh, while smoke rolls in the background out of his friend's mouth. Just looks like a fun night with friends. He was just yeah. a normal guy. Now, first of all, I've had some nights pretty similar to this. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, whatever. <laughs> I ain't take no fucking pictures about it, because like, t- like that story I was telling you earlier, some of those, some of those fun times you just keep up here. You don't record that for the internet. Like, but in any case, like, don't show me the sweet picture of this guy because everybody is good and evil. There's no, there's no like, Hitlers anymore. It doesn't seem is that like. definitely a picture of him? 
It's from the internet. I don't know. It looks yeah, like it, it must be true. Oh. It's, it's right there on the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Take it as fact, everyone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean... Uh, oh, another thing that I that I didn't like about it, like the biggest thing that I have an issue with is like, like the discrepancy about distance, or maybe it's in the actual you know, evidence, and I just haven't read that part yet. Because, you know, even 30 feet seems like quite a distance. It's but the nuts. whole, like, showing pictures of the guy's face with just a little, like, not a little bruise, but it's a big, you know, lump here. They're like, oh, he didn't get the shit kicked out of him. It's like, well, first of all, that was taken right after the hit, so it's not going to be all gross and yellow or anything yet. Mm -hmm. And, you, like, if he already got hit once there, all it means is one more hit. And do you think Michael Brown or whoever was hitting him was just going to be like, ah, screw that. I'm just going to walk away let him be here. No, he's going to throw know, a head stomp in. He's, he's in danger for his life if you go down knocked out on the pavement in an area like that. The way the court of public opinion swings these days, if you were actually involved in some sort of a scenario where you felt like you needed to defend yourself with deadly force, you better let the guy hit you a couple extra times. <laughs> like, like, it's a like risky if you move. show up, if the cops show up and there's <laughs> and there's two of you and one of you's got a gun and is a little beaten up and the other one's dead, it doesn't look very good. You better when the cops show up, you better look like fucking Rocky Balboa. They better haul you off to the ER right there. If they can still take your statement, you're looking too pretty. Like, uh, you know, you saw how they judged uh, George Zimmerman. You saw how they, they do it every time when there's a shooting. You know, the guy who survives, they're like, they're like looking at his face to see how beaten up he is. And all of a sudden, everybody's an expert. At, like, like, they're all like a cut guy. Like, yeah. like, uh, like, like who the fuck are you? Like, that's who they <laughs> Like, like when CNN and CBS is like uh, is like wrapping these guys up in their web of lies to, to bump their ratings up. CNN's ratings were huge this week, by the way. Uh, when they're doing that shit, you know who I'd, whose testimony I'd like to hear? I'd like to hear a medical uh, doctor, and I'd like a cut guy. Give me Stitch a fucking from cut the guy. UFC, the guy that yeah, does all the, a, yeah. Can get yeah, Stitch a boxing in here. cut guy, MMA uh -huh. cut guy. Give me a guy like that. Like like hey, in your day to day life, your profession is seeing people who just got punched in the face. Over the course of the neck uh, of minutes, hours, and days, like you know all about how faces react to, you know, things hitting them. Look at this guy right here. Did he just get a beating? Oh yeah, he's gonna. He's not gonna look pretty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> like you need that old guy. Like you need Spit Bucket Charlie. Who knows? I would like my my yeah, corner man country to be would trust Spit Bucket Charlie. A British woman. Now what does he say? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, not going to look pretty in the morning. I think mine was Irish. As a little, yeah, it, it was a little, it was, it was a little Irish there. Yeah. Don't look very pretty That's in the so morning, bad. That's unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> it's not. He took a little bit of a rough and tumble, didn't he? <laughs> I try to do oh, accents. They come out. It's random, not even a man. British accent. That's just a specifically <laughs> kitty accent. <laughs> Uh, kid, no, that's that's a, that's different. I don't know the different like um, the names for the different British accents. You know, whether it's a Southern accent, like, like a, a Yorkshire Cockney accent. and a yeah, yeah. something else. A an accent like this is a bit dirty, isn't it? This is sort of uh, you know an, an uneducated girl. You know, had, had any elocution lessons? You know, nothing like that. Yeah. Like, you sound like a salty portside prostitute in 1790. Kitty's cousin <laughs> nice. sounds. He's got a cousin sounds a bit like this. She does, ah, uh, yeah. It's uh, they they all sound a little bit different. Some the the more posh accents are cooler. Like I like Kitty's accent. I think it's very professional. It's one of the reasons um, why like I immediately wanted her representing me. Was like you know when people when when you answer a phone call from Kitty, you feel like you're talking to fucking like James Bond's secretary or something. Like <laughs> like hold a moment for Mr. Bond. Like, like, like I, I feel like she sounds very official when she talks, and she's, you know, she's got a good head on her shoulders. Kitty, Kitty's, uh, Kitty's great, but she will abandon your ass for Thanksgiving. I'll tell you that right now. She'll <laughs> fly, fly off across state lines with some buddies and just leave you. Leave you I'm just going to smile throughout the rest of the night thinking about you telling your family off, I'm not coming, I've got my own plans, and you get home and you're just, just bold-faced ditched. I just totally was. I, I was... I, it, my mom was getting a little. She was like, "Well, why don't you do it this and that way?" I'm like, "Mom, yeah, I'm doing my own thing here. Me and Kitty, we got a thing we're gonna do. We're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. I don't think she wants to get drugged around all these places. I don't think she wants to go out. You know, it'd be. I, I like it. I like it our way. It keeps us more flexible. You know, if she's if she's not feeling good that day, then we can scale things back. If she's feeling great that day, we can scale things up. So I don't even want to do that. I, I was really thinking about Kitty for this thing. <laughs> and, uh, and and then he's like, off to Colorado. <laughs> 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 like, 
like just <laughs> out of here. It was it was funny. And, and like at first she didn't believe me like, when I was telling her all this, and then later she's like, "You don't really tell your parents so that, did you?" And I'm just, oh yeah, I told him. I was like, me and Kitty doing it. She's like, hey, I kind of feel bad now. I'm like, you should. You should feel bad. This is the sort of thing you feel bad about. You they had me. really cheap tickets. <laughs> Did they? Have several tickets? Oh, I love no, them. Yeah. just the one. No. Only three hundred and twenty dollars. Can you believe it? There was no notice, really. Great prices. They didn't have two of those great tickets. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, just the one. Oh, yeah. I got a hold of William Shatner. He hooked up a special deal with Priceline.com. Bullshit! <laughs> You're leaving. Uh, When'd she come uh, back? I don't know. I, I should probably text and find out. Um, she left <laughs> yes. She left like yesterday. Um, yesterday, the day before. I don't know. I've been, I've been getting up earlier and going to bed later, so my days have gotten several hours longer because hmm. I'm. Doing a bunch of stuff, and it 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 it's kind of messed with my sense of time. I'm like, oh yeah, that was yesterday, and and my girlfriend's like, no, that was today. I'm like, we did all that shit today. <laughs> like, so, so I don't know. She flew yesterday, the day before, something like that. Uh, so what is this yeah. topic you have for us? Airstrike. Oh, so this is what happened. Like ISIS had uh, raised their flag on this little mountain or hill or whatever. If you're queued up at 28 seconds, you'll see what uh-huh. the United States did about that. So they just put a black flag on a hillside. Yeah, they, they're, there's and there's some bad guys up there. They're like they're like camped out up there. There's some bad guys and they've raised their flag. Are you ready? Is that yeah. their real name? The black flag of ISIS? Yeah, it's like what they call it. Oh, what is this? Pirates of the Caribbean? That's but that's really lame. All right, are you ready? The black flag yes. of ISIS. Ready, yeah. set, play. Uh -huh. Got it. <laughs> That seems like a very expensive way to take out a flag. We're not done yet. Oh, what the fuck? It's like a, it's like a million dollars worth of <laughs> ordnance to take out a flag. A couple hundred thousand. At least. I don't know. What if it was a cruise missile or something? Like, I think it's airstrikes. I think it's planes dropping bombs. But was there something it, else there that was worth blowing up, or did they just some... blow all that money? Like, yeah, fuck you, your flag. I I don't know. It just yeah. There was one lone sentry stands his ground. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, they yeah, they knocked their fucking flag down. I guess that, that's 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 how they roll. <laughs> that's a ridiculous method of that's flag a waste of down. money. I well, remember um, Osama bin Laden said that he can beat the United States and that the method is simple. He's like, all we have to do is put a flag in the middle of the desert, and the United States will spend a billion dollars trying to take it down. And that burned in my head. It's like, right, he's not wrong on this, right? And, it, and it's been done before. Like, heck, that's how they beat Russia in Afghanistan. They just just sort of kept planting flags, existing, you know, getting the people on their side. And eventually Russia was like, this is too expensive. It is not worth it to sit here and bomb you guys so you go back into your caves again and again and again. We're done. And, you know, Osama bin Laden beat the USSR. How do you beat the USA? Same way. Put a flag on a hill, let the idiots drop all that ordinance, and, uh, you know, tomorrow, new stick, all new flag. We can afford to knock that the, flag down. The black flag of Fuck ISIS. Flag. I like that we dropped all that TNT on that fucking flag. That was great. I hate it. I hate it. Probably wasn't even the real flag. Just some old black underpants. They're not very well off, are they? <laughs> Those ISIS folk. I don't know. They're they, very they, well they do off. Some they, raise, they do some fundraising, yeah. Many, many millions of dollars a week. They have a Kickstarter. They have oil. They've captured oil fields. They they are flo they are flush with money. They're literally selling oil. I feel like that takes some sophistication, like big ships and. Doesn't seem like it. They uh, mm. they've captured oil fields. They're shipping the oil. They're making millions a week. I need a Thank good you. oil field. They're up for grabs, apparently. <laughs> yeah, all you need is a couple of guns. <laughs> you just need the blue flag of Woody's Woody Craft. You just fucking put it out there. We fight off any ISIS members, and we got ourselves an oil field. It'd be me got... and like 70 friends with diamond swords trying to take over an oil rig. <laughs> a diamond this armor, good... enchanted. Speaking of armor, <laughs> look, at this, look at this shit. So, um, I've got a bunch of body armor here. Oh, yes. Right. Is you? Oh, is he gonna Sam? You gonna put it on? Yeah, might as well. There you go. I can't believe I'm hungry after all the Thanksgiving food I ate. Yeah, glutton. 
<laughs> Indeed. It's so fucking heavy. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. It does look cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and cool in like the 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 real meaning of it. Like, that looks badass. Yeah, you should wear that out. If there's a strap that goes between his legs, it's lame. But I don't think that there is. Here he goes. He's a little off camera. Yeah. There we go. So how heavy is that? It's about 35 pounds. Is it hard or is it soft? It's hard as a fucking rock. So if so, like, it would also protect you from knives and kicks and other stuff. It's got one of those in it, huh? It's got several of these in there. So I've got one of these uh, in my, on my chest. So knock on it like a door. You knock it's on doors weird. I would not want to be your friend. Just like knock on it like a door. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how people so, knock on doors. So it's, <laughs> it's, so it's, <laughs> it's AR-500 armored uh, steel curved and it's covered with like a bed liner type material to keep it from ever corroding or anything so I got one of these in the front one of these in the back and then I've got a six inch by six inch plate on each of my sides now for some reason I always thought those covered more of you that's still pretty risky business yeah right <laughs> he's handling most of the deadly shots but uh, not all I've got all my all my vital organs you know from head on are pretty much covered I mean I guess mm. You know, my arms are in here. Above your nipples, I don't think you want to be shot here. There's a plate no. here. I would have to get shot, like, in here. Right, right. It's covering the bulk of your trouble spots, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but you know, you gotta have to, you got to be able to use your arms. Right, that's the other part of it. We could dress you up like a bomb suit. Neck and... protection garment? So that seems Any like what? a big chunk there, like somewhere, like a neck plate you could put on? Probably. Like, I've also, I've got some other stuff, though. So this is if you're going pretty extreme. This is the the steel plate. No, uh, does that hold magazines in the front there? Yeah, like uh, AR mag, AR mag, pistol mag, pistol mag. Mm -hmm. uh, I can put a I can put a, a holster here with a with a gun. Oh so. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's incredibly heavy. <laughs> How much would one of those run me? He like just took his head. Wait, he can hear you? How did he hear that? But I've also got How much how much would one of those cost? I think like two fifty or something. Two hundred and fifty dollars. That's not as much as I thought. Wow, that's that's actually they affordable. Sent, they sent me a bunch of stuff. You they also sent me like this. That? Yeah, oh totally. Yeah, they sent me uh, like this big crazy backpack with like a hydration thing in it, and I'm actually giving a bunch of this away. So I'm going to be doing a. If you follow me on Facebook, it's face. It's just FPS Russia on Facebook. Um, I don't know. There's there's like 1.7 million people on there. That's how you know it's the real one. Um, I'm going to be giving a bunch of this body armor away. I'm going to keep some for myself, and I'm going to test some for uh, the video. But I'm going to keep. Uh, um, but I'm going to give some away. So I've got like. The soft body armor too. Like I've got a ton of these. These are Kevlar, um, and these will stop a 44 Magnum. Now the body armor company, they don't want you to shoot yourself with it on. No. Have they considered other things? Like what if we strap some? Uh, I guess I'd still be shooting you if we put explosives on you and shot that. What about Jeremy? <laughs> yeah. Like, what if we shot Jeremy? Try to explain to them that it's not as big a loss to mankind. <laughs> And I'm sure, like, that's, they'd pay him a, a pretty penny to shoot him. Uh, I think they just don't want to be associated with those reckless acts. I wish Kyle had his headset on. Oh. Kyle, what if we shot Jeremy wearing it? Would... I mean, I, I don't think that they want me to shoot anyone with it they, because of the liability issues. This is the soft body armor, by the way. It's just a vest, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I know what vests are. And, uh, wait, how much that one be? Um, I don't, let's see, I think I got it here. How much that one be? You are from How much Ferguson. would that one be? <laughs> I'm looking. Let's see. It's free on Riot Night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can get it out of here. No, he's talking yeah. about the looting. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'd say they protect their place pretty well. The guys who make the body armor and all. Um, yeah, they'd probably... I, 
I really wish I had it in front of me. It's it's the level three A stuff. That's what the softs. Oh, here we go. Let's Is it see. similar to what police officers wear? Yeah, it'll stop a forty four magnum. Um, this little this little sheet will. You can see it's like it's super thin and it it doesn't weigh anything unlike that other stuff. But the other stuff will stop three oh eight. Um, I mm. can't find it, but I, I think it's it's like a it's somewhere it's less than two hundred. Just for I, fun, I I'd like to see you shoot it with a fifty cal. Oh, I'm going yeah. to. I'm going to shoot it with a 50 cal with one of my big, crazy armor-piercing rounds, one of the ones that will shoot oh. through a tank. But buy a full pig carcass and uh, wrap it around that first so we can see some real-time devastation. I've got a lot of good ideas for this video. I've been, um, I've been planning it for a while, so there's going to be a couple vehicles involved, a couple of big machine guns. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a whole thing. Some telephone poles, apparently. Yeah, some telephone poles. So Those you're going to buy telephone poles, and then like, will they put them on a trailer for you? Uh, I got a trailer. Okay, you have a trailer. How long is your trailer? Forty feet. I don't know. Oh it's well, big. shucks. That's a big trailer. Yeah. Mine's eighteen feet, and I'm thinking telephone poles would stick out the back by eighteen more. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you you have a tractor trailer trailer. It's a, it's a big one. It's very long. Is so, it a gooseneck or is it literally a tractor goose, trailer trailer? It it's a gooseneck. With it's a it's it's all it's a steel gooseneck trailer. It's all steel. All right, and who's the who has the gooseneck truck? Do you have a? a is it in yours? That um, that two thousand two uh, Chevrolet truck has a ball in the middle. It has a three point hitch, I guess you the call it. The red one. A three point hitch is on a tractor. This would be a a, a gooseneck. A third wheel or whatever. Third wheel. That's wheel. A, fifth wheel. Fifth whatever, wheel. Like. That is right. Yeah, I mean, you're agreeing with anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in any case, I got I can pull it with that. I'm gonna get the foam poles. I don't give too much away, but I'm going to. Um, you know, the idea is the body armor will protect you from this, it'll protect you from that. So I'm going to throw some things at it that, and get creative with the, to make it funny, you know, things that it won't protect you from. Like, I don't know, if a piano fell on you from 50 feet in the air or something, body armor doesn't help with that, so let's do it. It might. I bet the body armor is undamaged from the piano. The, that And that'll be the guy. It was like, yeah, body armor... Still good. <laughs> yeah. Like, the guy's head's all crushed and mangled and fake blood's everywhere and the piano's a wreckage and like you've got to like like drag the vest out from under the piano to like get to it, but like yeah, still good. Ready for the pool table. <laughs> <laughs> Drop that so, next. So that's gonna be good. We're gonna do the body armor thing. But like I said, uh, I'm gonna be giving away a bunch of this body armor, a bunch of it. And not just body armor, I've got like these backpacks. Um, I'm not keeping this. This is a really cool backpack. It's got like, like I said, it's got a, a pump thing here and like a hydrate hydration no nozzle here. Um, there's some like tactical lights and there's a weapon sight, like a little optic. They sent me a bunch of stuff basically to give away, you know, as part of the promotion. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but if you pay attention to my Facebook, and I'll mention it here because I want some of the PKA guys to get in on some of this cool shit as well. Um, Gonna give some body armor away, but I'm I'm gonna give away one of these big plate carrier, one of the big heavy motherfuckers. It's like th almost three hundred dollar package, and I'm gonna give away maybe some like used stuff that I've shot holes through for the people who can't act technically have the, you know, the actual real body armor. Maybe since it's destroyed, I could send it to Canada. I don't know, and I'm gonna give away some of the soft body armor and little tidbits, and it's gonna be fun. Speaking of giveaways, you can't send body armor to Canada. There's weird. I, I don't. I got somebody else that does that stuff for me, but yeah, Canada. I I read that the other day. Some guy from Canada was like, "Oh, I can't get it." We'll see. But the, we're doing a Patreon giveaway, right? So Microsoft's giving us an Xbox to give away, and if you're a Patreon member at the end of the year, so it, it doesn't have to be by the end of November, but if you're a Patreon member at the end of December, then uh, you'll be eligible to win a free Xbox, Xbox One, to be specific. Yeah, get, get this thing. Is it going to be that? The Xbox One Assassin's Creed Unity combo I'm thing? Like, I'm like 90% sure that it will be. Uh -huh. uh, you know? I'm 90% I'm like sure it will be. And I know they had some kind of a uh, snafu with this game, but Ubisoft is making it right, what I understood. Oh, what's I think the snafu? I hadn't heard about it. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard it either. <laughs> I think they had some tech issues with their game. Uh, maybe some people were saying that it wasn't quite ready before they shipped it out. In oh. any case, uh, I know the... Um, well, by the time you win this, it'll be fixed. Exactly. Yes. I think, that, I think like, uh, someone from U Ubisoft personally apologized, <clears throat> and uh, they said that like if you'd bought the season pass for this game, they were going to give you another free Ubisoft game, or Ubisoft, and um, 
something else. They, they were making it right that they had done that something was wrong with the game. I haven't played it yet. I'm still looking forward to playing it. Um, but in any case, we're giving away an Xbox. What do they have to do to be uh, to be eligible for the Xbox? Like uh, and favorite this video. No, no, they have to be Patreon members uh, that signed up in that they're still signed up. At January the the one, right? Yeah, January one. If you're still signed up on January one, then you're eligible to win uh, Xbox. Yeah, so so, so five dollars gets them in, like a, like yeah, they a all get them in. The... Okay, so so even if you're just a five dollar guy. Um, we're gonna give give one of these Xboxes away, and we'll see if that's the sort of thing that works out. You know, we can't be bleeding Xboxes every month. We're not always gonna have a supply of free ones, but if it's something where we see that hey, more people are getting involved and they're discovering how wonderful Patreon is and all the little benefits you get from it, um, then maybe we'll we'll keep giving shit away. But right now, Microsoft sent us a cool Xbox. So we're gonna give that to you guys. I oh the postcards. I, I was I'm done gonna ask for a postcard update. Yeah, so the postcards have taken a while to do. Um, what Sorry do you got? About that. It was a couple things that held us up. We had to get um, the right image on the postcards, and we had to get them printed out, and they like came to me, or I don't know where they went to first. But in any case, Woody signed them. He got them to me, and I've taken um, uh, a, a, quite a while signing them because I'm trying to get a personalized message to every single person. Um, I wanted everybody to have their own little thing, so I'm writing little jokes on every single one of them, <laughs> and I'm trying to come up with something funny for everybody. Uh, so it's taken me a while. I, I, I did like 30, 30 one day and 50 the next day, and I also had to have to like get these address labels for them, you know, to, to send where they go, print them out, got all that done. Um, so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna get Merca to sign them, which is only gonna take a day or two, and then they'll be shipped out to everybody. So. You don't have to wait too much longer for your Patreon postcards because they're like 90% done now. Awesome. Yep, yep. They, they should be to you within uh, within two weeks. Awesome. Yeah, hey, before Christmas, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, just in time for the holiday. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry I didn't even know I was so going to get to sign them. Now yeah. I need to practice a Mirka Durka signature. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, there's, and you got to keep in mind, there was a shitload of them. Like, there's just a big box of these things, like index cards. It's... Uh, it's 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 been a it's been a thing, and getting the addresses printed on and and stuck to every one of them was just a real motherfucker. Cause you guys live all over the goddamn world. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that's the deal. I, I, and I've had to do this sort of thing before. I've done a few like um, Kickstarter Indiegogo type little things where I was responsible for signing some stuff. Like uh, when we made my video game, I signed like. I don't know, 400 T-shirts and all of the and like tons and tons are hard of hard to sign. They suck. You gotta like spread them out with your hand. You hold and them like tight. Really... And yeah, and the sharpie wants to grip. And and if you sharpie write like, to... if you write at any normal pace with the sharpie, it like the um, it goes from dark to light to dark, and it becomes really it's bad. You gotta yeah, be careful. you gotta get really slow. It's annoying. Uh, but but mm-hmm. I did all of those, and then when it came time to do actually send out wings, uh, the stuff for wings boot camp, um. He signed everything and then mailed it back to me to mail out to everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, before I did these postcards, I didn't quite comprehend exactly what kind of move that was. I was like, oh, I signed them back to you to send out. Whatever. Suck it up. No, no. Because the that last section where everyone has their own personalized mailing address on it, that's the hardest part. The fact that Wings <laughs> was like, yeah, yeah, thanks. Wings got the money. Kyle got the work. Um, so in all of these projects, I usually get the short end of the stick and people <laughs> people think that I'm like counting their money and laughing gleefully. And it usually ends up being the sort of thing that I br- either break even on, lose money, or I'm like, this took me four hours of my time. I c- that's probably more valuable than the $200 I made here. But in any case... I, I always sign everything. I always mail everything out. It just takes a little while sometimes, but and, but we got all these done, so they'll be to you soon. Yep. Uh, let me see. I've got topics on topics on topics. Uh, bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. Oh. Oh wait, wait. I think we I talked about that one already. Wow, wow. Does anyone else have any topics? Um. Yes, I have a ton of topics. So I have some uh, Ask Me Anything qu- questions from the uh, Patreon. Uh, our Patreon members sent us a ton oh, of Oh, let's questions. go through some of those. I, I linked you guys. They're in the, the chat. I got them open. I have the greatest video. I'm just linking it now. 
Wanted to cover it on the show. It's perfect for PKA. Um, but we can go through the Ask Me Anythings first. Keep this thing uh, on, on the... Unless you want to do it first. Um, let's, let's do your thing first, because I think it's the, uh, the seal thing. Yeah, it's the greatest thing. Yeah. Do you want to you want to you want to frame this up before we roll the video or just going cold? Uh so what you're going to see here is a seal raping a penguin. Are you ready? If you're not prepared for that, look away now. Yeah. Well, it, Woody, the video says having sex. Is it are they raping? Well, raping. you be the judge. <laughs> you be, you the, be judge. the judge. You tell me if this seal is holding down the penguin against his will. All right. Ready? Well, I haven't seen the video. Let's, let's see. Ready, set, play. Multiple occurrences of King Penguin sexual harassment by Antarctic fur seals. Oh yeah, he's raping it. There's an enormous <laughs> fur seal. This thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, weighs 600 pounds. It is sitting on top of a fucking uh, large penguin, while at least 40 <laughs> other penguins look on it in horror. It's using its body weight and its front flippers, if you will, to hold it down, while the penguin bites at it with its little beak. It is humping at it in sort of short, rhythmic, uh, <laughs> fucking manner. And he's looking around at the other one's like, See this? <laughs> See this? You like it? The little move I call, fuck your buddy in the ass. <laughs> like, he's, he is raping the shit out of Penguin, like, looking around at everybody like, How you like this? Like that? Like he's just going to town on that penguin, really See, raping the fuck out of it. I'm not against yeah, that, having that sex with other animals, right? Like, I, you do what you do, you, baby. But the thing is, those other animals should should be able to say no. Like, Mirka, if you had a thing for grizzly bears, and you often had sex with them, that's obviously consensual. Because if a grizzly yeah. bear doesn't want to have sex with you, it won't. However, if you're into chickens, right? And and you could fuck a chicken. Think about how big an egg is, right? You could. Get I saw a video the other night of a guy eating a chicken's... What do you call that hole that birds have? It's not a vagina or an asshole. It's like a euphrum or Chloe. something. They, in any right? case, in any case, he like had the chicken pinned down on the table, and he's like, "God, it's like ass feathers spread open." And he's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh man!" And, and and every now and then he'll look at the camera. He'll be like, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like making eye contact with you while he eats the chicken's like poop vagina because they have like one hole that does everything back there apparently, like laying eggs and. So you watched that long enough to notice trends of him licking <laughs> different ways. <laughs> It was actually, that sounds uh, horrific, just off the bat. I, I'm gonna sound a little dumb here. What are the things? They're like web MDs or something. They're like they're not gifts. They're sort of like quick oh, little. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like, the HTML5 or um. There's another. Those have thing. gotten really popular uh, on on message boards and stuff. I was on 4chan just scrolling through, and and I just you know th there it was. And like I I have a uh, <laughs> I have an add-on on my Google Chrome so that if I hover over. An image, it's expanded all of a sudden, so I don't have to click and load links. And so it automatically starts playing these HTML5 uh, videos. And there it was, you know. There's no, like, do I really want to watch a guy eat a chicken's pussy? <laughs> Think about this one for a moment before I click. No, it's just, like, hover, pussy eating. Like, oh, shit. And you're like, you don't want to take the mouse away and disgust because you have to start the video over then because you know you're going to be curious about what you just saw, so I leave it there. And I watched the guy eat the chicken's pussy for maybe five or six seconds, and he was, <laughs> and the chicken's just like, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> like this locking eyes with you, and it's so dark. He's he looks to be like Hispanic and kind of, I don't know, he looks kind of third worldy. Like you know, the table he's on looks rickety, and you know that's that's his chicken raping table and all. It's very dirty <laughs> stuff. I, I apologize though. I cut you off when you were explaining that some animals. Uh, will allow you to fuck them, and it's clear they're allowing the, you to fuck them while others... Because of the physical right. mismatch, exactly. The physicality, I, yes. Yeah, I feel like if the guy's having sex with the chicken... I, I mean, but does the chicken... I mean, I saw... I know you focused really on the dude, but was the chicken into it? It looked unhealthy for the chicken, the amount he was spreading that chicken's rear. Mm. Um, although I will say... It didn't have felt that bad. <laughs> 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 In in the chicken's world, I'd I, I'd say you know the soft tongue of a human being is something they don't come along very often. I mean, even if another chicken was like into that, like what are they gonna like peck your vagina like with that hard beak? Like you don't right, want right. that with the egg mm -hmm. tooth on the end. I can't feel no, good. No, you definitely don't. So but maybe the chicken was enjoying like it. A dumb animal. But if I saw that going down, I'd be like, oh, poor chicken, getting a real tongue thrashing back there. Mm. 
Now, if it had been a black guy, the internet would have never let that go. If a black guy had a chicken, like, and he was like licking it while it was still, <laughs> uh, I didn't like, even yeah, think of the oh, whole black person chicken, chicken connection. Forever. Yeah. Oh, it would have been hilarious. Uh, it, but but it was clearly a Hispanic guy yeah. or some other. He, he was a brown man. And um, mm-hmm. I never know who to call white and who not to call white. It, it almost seems like if a Mexican guy, I, is he white? He's, he's not, I guess, right? Hispanic. R- okay. I, I, and but then, then you, there are those boxes where you can check Hispanic white. When it's like, what, what are you? And you can be like, white, Hispanic white, Hispanic black other pacific I, islander I, I remember the ones that people don't really care about i was talking to indian people this is a couple years ago at cisco and uh like I, I didn't know what box they were and these are like uh, asian indians right not not native american i guess i don't even mm-hmm. like being called indians anyway um these are asian indian men and and it like i just didn't like are they white are they non-white they're kind of brownish they're clearly not black but the the heck are we doing here? I don't know how to classify this, and I never know quite if it's okay to cut off someone and be like, "You're not white." <laughs> <laughs> like, I, no, not... that seems like a one-way street. Like, you don't black look people white can to probably me. Say like, "You're not black," but if you just say to, yeah, you can't say you're not white to someone that just, I don't know. It seems like you're trying to make it a group. Like, you're not good enough for our club. <laughs> Get out of the white White House. Right there, there or, are some Hispanic you know, people who, who look really kind of white to me. You know, they're they're every bit yeah, as white as like, Yeah, I mean, I, I would argue that he's Hispanic white. He's half Hispanic, yes. half white. There, there are some Hispanic people that who, disqualifies you from half the scholarships. Who, who, that also <laughs> disqualifies you from being able to play any race card whatsoever. You got a little white in you, can't 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 pull it at all. Hmm. Well, Obama's like, got white in him. Well, he's got black in him too, and that's different. Yes, yeah, a little bit of black. That offsets one hundred percent of black cre- like street cred. Uh, you're you're not white, you're, you're but but you're you, you can fit in 100 percent with the black community most of the time. I feel, especially if you're like Obama, he can totally like pull it out. Like like you see Bill Clinton talk in the South, he becomes a very different Bill Clinton. I promise you. You hear him speak on Capitol Hill, he sounds he sounds completely different than he sounds when he's in a ba- a black Baptist church in the South. They they put on a different tone, a different a whole different thing. When Obama is speaking to a congregation of African Americans in a church. He starts drawing out this sort of southern slang almost in his voice. You can you can hear that this draw in his voice all of a sudden. We got some fucking Hawaii via Kenya via Chicago. Like he's got no business bringing that out. George Bush is is, <laughs> is more of a legit cowboy than this guy is. No, and George Bush from, is not a legit cowboy. And he's from in the Matt, slightest. I, He's more of a cowboy than Obama. George is. At Bush least was raised in private schools in the Northeast. He's from Cape or Maine and. He was a fighter it, pilot. At you least see he the lives. Fix. At least he lives in Texas. He has a property there. Obama's got no reason to be bringing out that southern draw, but he'll do it. Uh, it I've, I've heard him do it many times, especially around election season. Depending on which group he's talking to, he's he's a different kind of guy. Yeah, Obama's a lot of things, but southern is not one of them. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's one I'll pull. I can't say he's not white because he's got a white grandmom or grand white mom or something. White mom. White mom. But uh, but I can definitely say he's There's not. There's nudes southern. of her. No, there are nudes of Obama's mom. I don't right. believe you. Show me. I'm not Googling that. I don't want to be on a list. You go ahead and do it yourself. I I really... If I'm president, I make it so if you Google Obama's mom's nudes, something bad happens. So if you were president, if someone looked up FPS Kyle's mom nudes, there would be trouble brewing? If there were FPS Kyle mom nudes out there, like there are of Obama's mom, there's totally What if there were filthy there? photoshops of her doing naughty things? Well, that's terrible. Would you still Taylor. you would dislike that? Yeah, I w- yeah no, no just would... hypothetical, hypothetical. Terrible. Fuck you. So I've got these AMA <laughs> questions here. So I have Obama's uh, mom's nudes. Haha. Uh-huh. Get on my level. There you go. Not too bad looking. Um. Here's one. This is for Woody. Um, oh. Woody, bang, marry, <laughs> kill. I don't fuck, marry, kill. Who gets what between Kyle, Chiz, and Taylor? All right, so I have to choose whether I fuck, marry, or kill uh, the different ones. Three of us. Hmm. All yes. right, I am going to. Um, huh. I I guess see the thing I, like um, instantly off the bat I was like I'm gonna fuck Kyle obviously right I want to see uh, <laughs> want to see the legend apply his craft 
But as I thought about it some more, if I marry Kyle, I still get to fuck him. I think I'm gonna go fuck Kyle though. One, because you know, fuck Kyle. And two, because uh, Kyle's, you know, he goes through people a lot and I'm afraid that if I were to marry Kyle today, you know, he wouldn't be a one man guy. Mm -hmm. Kyle has a lot of commitment issues. Yeah, he's commitment issues. So, so fuck Kyle. Now I am choose. I have to kill or marry Chiz or Merka. <sighs> Merka, can you cook? Uh, I can't. Hmm. I think I'm killing you. <laughs> I think we oh. just. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna marry Chiz. Um, you know the guy just looks like a man who can cook, and uh, and you clearly Italian. Can't. Italian yeah. food. Italian food. You marry into that family? I bet. I bet maybe he's got a granny who could like you know rip. It'd be like it'd be like a Sopranos dinner. It would be great. Yeah, yeah. I think um, uh, I think when you get Taylor, all you get is uh, his, his sparkling personality. So you did. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> what else you bring? You would never get tired of me. <laughs> oh, uh, hunting skill, craftsmanship, woodworking. No, I, I don't, those aren't, I was just uh, repeating things that you have values. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right, no. so there it is. I'm, I'm picturing Kyle. us in a survival situation. Uh, not me. I, I'm, I'm choosing the person I'm going to shack up with for the rest of my life. And you'd prefer Chiz. Uh, Chiz of all people. I. So here's... You a, and and you, you guys have access to this list as well. I'm just sort of picking and choosing some that I find to be interesting. This is another Woody question, though. Um, hey, Woody, you always talk about becoming a farmer once pot becomes legal in North Carolina. <laughs> Seeing as you have had some successful ventures in, in the, into the world of entrepreneurship, is the weed thing an actual plan or just a joke? Um, it, it, I would totally do it. I, I really would. The thing is, I feel like it wouldn't be the free-for-all that I dream it would be. It would take a little market research, right? Right now... Weed is like, I want to say if you plant a crop of corn, I read these numbers like a month ago, you make like 80 bucks an acre or something like that. If you plant a crop of soybeans, it's a comparable number. And pot is $2,500 an acre right now if you plant it. And um, I'm sorry, but that cannot it be seems low. It's got to be a lot more than that. Uh, shucks. Let me see how quickly I can find this. Uh... Because, and I, I'm not, I've never seen a pot plant, but. I know that, like, I've seen, like, raids where they, like, take them and stuff, and I've seen them talk about the value of them and how much. I think if you got a few plants, then you can make, like, 10 pounds every couple months. Okay. And, like, a pound of marijuana is, like, four or $5,000. All right, all right. Here's where, where my mistake was. It was about the yield per acre was about 2500 but the production value in dollars per acre was $1.2 million for pot. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, I'm looking at tobacco. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> well, you here, get some here. weed in the ground. Let me give you the numbers that I'm looking at. Uh, it's from normal, so you know it's accurate. And here. So here are the top 10 North Carolina cash crops. Um, it shows you how many harvested acres there are. The street price per unit per dollar. In the yield per acre, how do you read this thing? So it looks like um, so it's in pounds, the tobacco and uh, it, the BU's bushels. Mm -hmm. um, so it appears that uh, one pound, of, let's see, pound of marijuana, unit street price. Um, how many pounds are can you plant though? Production. So units. they're saying twenty six hundred dollars a Why pound. Why is the street price in not in nineteen ninety seven dollars? I. Uh, don't judge. I don't know. I don't it, understand. I guess yeah, it's an old thing. I think it, it would be. But it's here's a where lot. the $2,500 came from the street price per unit dollars. Yeah, that's 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 their street price per pound, but that's it's it's double that. You think it's double that now? Yeah. Yeah. It's four well, this is 1997 after all. There's a couple middlemen in there too. Maybe the the farmer is only making twenty five hundred per pound, and by the time the, the it gets retail, it's five grand a pound. Just making that up could be. If a you thing. went, if no, if 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 you go straight from the guy who's like growing it somewhere to to your, I don't know, well, wherever you keep a fucking pound, it it'll be about five thousand dollars. So neither here nor there. Um, 
I suspect that that glorious difference, right? The unit price difference where it's like tobacco's a little under two bucks, cotton's half a buck, soybeans are a little under seven, and pot is gloriously $2,600. If it became legal, it wouldn't stay like that, right? And suddenly like, there'd be so much competition amongst legal pot growers that, uh, that that number would drop. But if it still made sense, then yeah, yeah, I would grow pot. Um, I think it's to be used responsibly, uh, especially in a legal situation. Treat it like alcohol, where you need to keep this thing in moderation or it messes you up. But uh, yeah, yeah, I would totally grow it if it was a good profit. Would you become like a cool stoner dad or just sell it? No, I would not become a cool stoner dad, not in the slightest. <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't think so. Yeah, I don't think it's for me. I don't drink alcohol much either. Like, I can't remember the last time I drank. It was probably a PKA episode. Um, yeah, so no, I wouldn't start being a pothead just because it was legal. But I might start being a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what finally facilitates it. You know what? Weed's legal. I'm becoming a farmer. Like you're the one person that took that that approach to when it got legalized. The only one. Well, Everyone else just wants to smoke. If that's the case, then then I would make tons of money, but I doubt it is. I bet pot. I mean, I don't know. It, it takes a lot of know how to grow it. You know, it, it's not like corn where you just kind of plant your perfect genetically formed seeds, and it's like a well, like repeated yeah, formula true. that's that's out there. I feel like with pot there are these like craftsmen who have special blends and who <laughs> like, you know, if I were to just grow a random uh, pot, like it was a tomato plant or something, I feel like I'd get random ineffective. You can, um, you know. so the way it works, um, you can order like the name brand seeds, like mm -hmm. from, from wherever you want, Amsterdam or California, straight through the mail seemingly. And, and so you've got the name brand. So if you wanted, train wreck or uh, OG Kush or something like that. I want Lemonade. something that was mentioned in the TV show Weeds. Milk. Okay. You want some green crack? That was mentioned in there, right? <laughs> was you some, it? Yeah, you get some green crack, some All Girl right. Scout cookies, something like that. <laughs> um, you, 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 you know, you get, a, you get a bag and it's just like uh, tomato seeds, you know, it'll be like Red Delicious or whatever. You're like, oh yeah, everybody loves some Red Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's got delicious I think right in it. From what I understand, your tomato growing expertise would lend itself quite nicely to the marijuana business because both of them can be done in sort of a, a hydroponic type setup. Um, both of them, I think, need that sort of scaffolding to mm -hmm. you know help them grow up and be the powerful load bearing uh, <laughs> plants. Yeah. But I would I would totally become a farmer if there was a good profit in marijuana. Now you, but how would you test the uh, you know the the, the potency, power, of your, your the potency. Like you can't see, like, you know, you see the guy. Like I've watched this movie called Bottle Shock. If any of you out there like wine and you want to see a good movie, watch Bottle Shock. It's excellent. Uh, it's about the it's about the California wine revolution back in the 70s or whenever the fuck it was. In any case, you know, he's got his like it looks like a turkey baster, but it looks much more scientific. And he's like getting the sample of the wine out, putting a little wine glass, and he's tasting it, and he's like, hmm. Needs another two weeks. Yeah, like like I I need you out there in that field just rolling one up with one hand. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that's just right. <laughs> I've got a plan. I've got a plan. We're sticking cheese in the little house. Right? <laughs> I have a guest house. <laughs> <laughs> like, Where's Chiz out? He's in the smokehouse. <laughs> <laughs> you're just looking. There's just smoke rolling out the window. His eyes like are bloodshot. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> He's some good shit, Woody. <laughs> We're good here. <laughs> but get, but Chiz in the guest house, and that thing will just the, the smoke will be pouring out the windows out the side all the time. Remember when Homer uh, became a tobacco? He was going to become a farmer, and uh, he he got some of the nuclear rods oh. from the plant, and he created tobacco, tobacco half <laughs> <Yeah>. tobacco, <laughs> half tomato. It's these tomatoes. You bite into them, and they're brown and juicy, and it <laughs> brown juicy. And they and taste awful. awful. <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh, oh, mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, so they're like addictive, bad tasting tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Every hunk you take is like a mouthful of chew, I guess. <laughs> All right. Are you looking through these questions? Do you have any you'd like to ask? Oh, uh, I, 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 I feel like some of them are phrased to me. And Here's one. 
Um, is losing your virginity as big of a deal as people make it seem? Does it mm. matter if it's a special occasion? What do you guys think? Thanks a lot, and keep up the, g- the great work. Ooh. I think we would need a female opinion before we could really answer that, because for, for men, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, for a, I agree. Good call. So for a guy, and, and I didn't feel any different afterwards. I was just like, you no. know, we got that done. Um, glad that's over. That was great. I enjoyed that. I want to do that some more, but like this first time wasn't like a monumental thing or anything or like some moment I'm going to think back on, um, you know. Yeah, I, I, it, yeah, it, I agree. It, it's, it's hard for me to for give me. advice to kids because I, in a lot of things it seems like we give kids advice that we know is not the best advice <laughs> because it's not socially acceptable, you right. know? It's, uh, Here's the advice that I would give myself if I could go back in time. If I got a fucking time machine and I can warp back to when I'm like 13, I'm like, look, man, these bitches don't even see it coming. You could knock them over like fucking bowling pins. Here's what you got to do. Because 13-year-old me could get with some 13-year-old girls. There was a... In fifth grade, there was a chick in my class with huge tits, okay? Like, there ain't nothing wrong with that if you're in fifth grade liking those big boobies on that girl. You're the same age. Hormones in the milk. Dude, they were huge. But you're not talking about having sex at 10. No, I'm not talking about... Well, I mean, you know, if she was... was No, no, she was 10. He was 13. If you're both... (laughs) No, he wasn't. I don't think. I'm not suggesting that anyone do anything with anyone who's younger than them because that's a real no-no, apparently. Um, and, and because in apparently. a lot of apparently, well, you know, you're 13, she's 12. Like, where do you draw the line between illegality? I and, haven't like, answered the question yet. Immorality. I want my turn. Go. So <laughs> for me, it was a big deal, and and it, like Kyle was alluding to, this isn't always the advice like I'd want to hand out, but when I was when I was young, I don't want to give all these details out, but when I when I lost my virginity, I guess, you know, right beforehand, my two closest friends had already lost theirs and it felt like a race that I was losing. And, uh, when I finally, you know, caught them and also was a a member of the sex having community, then I, I, it gave me like kind of a, a sense of pride and self-confidence like, you know, ha, now no one has a thing on me. And, um, uh, and that was kind of good. In hindsight, you know, that was all in my own head. And, you know, I guess, like Kyle and Taylor said, it's not that, like, it changes you or suddenly, like, yeah. you, you, colors are different or your moral stance or, like, you, as a person, you've evolved in some way. But for me, I was stupidly kind of keeping score via some sort of sexual scorecard. And, uh, and I liked that I was finally on the board. And it, it yeah. made me it yeah. made me feel good. And then after that, by the way, like the frequency at which I had sex or how recently I had sex or how, you know, much my girlfriend wanted to have sex were all things that I, you know, that made me feel better about me. And um, that's I won't, probably not healthy, but that's that was young me. Okay. What do you, what do you think, Taylor? How big of a deal is losing your virginity? How bi- or, or perhaps how big of a deal was it? It or wasn't that it big of a deal. No. For me at all, it was. It, I can see what Woody's saying with like the whole wanting to join the crew if you had a friend who had fucked before you had, and it's like, oh, I'm missing out. They've experienced something I haven't yet. I want to get on this train. Uh, but in regard to this person's specific question of should it be a special occasion, I I don't think that matters one bit at all. Like one bit at all. Like I mean, maybe if you're a chick, you'll have a different perspective. But for me, I would almost prefer that it was some weird, crazy story that was like really excellent and good. That way. Even if it's not a special occasion, you got a yeah. good story for the ages. Like even if I it was would, terrible and went awful, if it was funny, and you still... sex stories are great. And all of my sex stories, almost none of them uh, even mention the actual sex act. It's not about like when we actually had sex. It's what I what I went through to try to get there to have the sex. What I was willing, mm-hmm. to, you know, the hoops and and, <laughs> and ladders I was willing to like shoot <laughs> through to, to put myself in a position where I could get laid. That's what makes the sex stories funny, and that's what, and and in part, that's that's what makes the sex good. It's it's uh, yeah. When I, I did this, I did that, went there, did all this stuff, got it. And, and, and <laughs> that, See, that's I, what it's all about. It's a, it's a never-ending hunt. It's like gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. It's like fucking <laughs> Pokemon, except not as rapey. It's Pussymon. <laughs> and yeah. So are so unanimous across the board. Special occasion doesn't matter for this I don't gentleman. Know. Whoever I, this. I like having a low count too. Like like I haven't been with a lot of women, and um, 
you know, and, and I like that. Uh, it, I wasn't sure I would I, when I was young, like I would worry that I was missing something or whatever. And uh, even now, like sometimes I hear Kyle talk about like his sexual prowess and uh, um, I would argue I've had more sex than Kyle. I'm older. Um, yeah, but uh, um, much older. <laughs> yeah. But really what I am is an absolute you know, expert in one person. And, uh, you know, if I went to some random girl, then maybe I wouldn't, wouldn't be any good at all. I'm not even sure. But, uh, I also kind of like it that way. I know? find that the same things usually work for just about, a, you know, there's a few key things that work across the board. You know, there's a little spe- you know, you feel around everywhere and wait for reaction. You know, some, some, some people like the back of their neck and some people like their ears and yeah. some people like fingernails. Sometimes you know, some like they, I know how to turn wings up the, you know, the, their lower back, you know, so you got to grow them long, long and, and sharp. Yeah. <laughs> some people like it, you know, like harder. Claws. Some people like it softer. Some people, you know, like, like, you know, I, you read stuff that works here and there and you're like, oh, no, that's, that's, that's not her kink. That's why, and that's one of the reasons why communication is so important. Like, the, right. Uh, you know, before you have sex with your partner, like, let's say you're both virgins, you, you probably need to talk about that. Maybe... Um, you know, talk about what you both expect to get out of the experience. That's that's probably the, what huge. you should really do. That, if yeah. there's any preparation to be done before you lose your virginity, it, and in an ideal situation, I think that maybe it's like you and your girlfriend have both never done it or, or something like that, and you talk about it for maybe a, you know, a while and figure out what you're both expecting to get out of the situation and be open and honest and don't be embarrassed. You're about to put your penis inside of her vagina. Like, why would you be ashamed to ask her a, a sex question? You know, that, that's the that's that's how you have good sex is you're not embarrassed to ask someone to lick your balls or you're not yeah. embarrassed to like uh, to tell someone that they're biting your dick or, uh, you know, something like that. If the people who are having bad sex are out there are sitting there just like, here we go again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> like, you know, and their wife is laying there just like, here we go again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. <laughs> I imagine her counting backwards. But, <laughs> um, but, but if you're going to have, but sex should be something uh, really fun that you share with somebody that you care about or just somebody you met at Denny's last night. It's up to you. Depends on Denny's. How it's, it's not about uh, what anyone else thinks about sex. It's about what you feel about sex and what it means to you. Some people think it's a mind, uh, something that you want to share between yourself and this one other person. Some people think it's not all that big of a deal, and it's just like maybe, you know, shaking hands. Maybe you want to shake hands with lots of people, see how they feel. Maybe this one's got a tighter grip. Maybe this one's got smaller hands. Maybe this one did her fingernails up really nice. You never know. Ooh. Shake, you want to shake? <laughs> but if someone shakes a lot of hands, you need to be careful and wear gloves. Purell. Purell. <laughs> because you, you know? don't want to add shit from hand- yeah. handshakers, chronic handshakers. So, Sometimes, sometimes you, uh, you know, you, your hand gets a little dirty. You gotta go, uh, you gotta go wash your hands up, get them clean. You gotta go. Hands. A lot of places have free clinics where you can fix up your dirty hands, no problem. <laughs> Absolutely. You just Google. Gl- you got gloves for free at the health department. Um, Excellent. You just make make sure. Not very you comfortable gloves at the health department. I'd recommend actually spending money for the ones at the store. Totally. It's, it's for, and, and I don't understand why they make condoms anymore that are non-lubricated. Who are these people yeah, out there? They're like, the I'm going in dry. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no, nah, she's so sure like the only use I her... anymore. I wouldn't even feel it. Can you use white like, platinum you know. with a condom? Is it? I'm not no. sure if it's... It, you have to use the right kind of condom. Um, if you use wet platinum with... Um, I'd have to go look at my condoms. But if you use wet platinum with um, like a... What are they made out of? Latex. Remind me of the latex. latex. I think if you use them with a latex condom, it will slowly deteriorate them and evolve, and uh, like like they'll kind of dissolve. Mm. A bit. So there's but latex, to... sheepskin, and one other thing. I don't remember the third one. There's there's um there's another synthetic material that like um the brand is called is like S K Y N skin, mm-hmm. and and um it's not the brand, it's the model. I can't remember the brand. It's like. Matt Trojans or something, but in any case, they're uh, they, they don't dissolve. But if you get the wrong kind, it will. Di- but you have to have sex for like an hour, like before that happens. Well, like, now we're like, getting into PKA stats. I, I think that you know the, the safe thing to tell people if they wanted to trust us was you use wet platinum with the right kind of condom. Yeah, I, yeah, I would I would use a water based lubricant if you have if you're using which includes the- Astroglide, KY jelly, and most of the big ones, water-based lubes. But, 
But I don't. I, I, I still use the, the, the wet platinum with the regular condoms sometimes because it really takes a long time. I'll just switch. I don't use condoms anyway, really. I mean, you know, plan B can be plan A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, <laughs> I didn't, I'm just joking about that. My cousin, though, for him, it's. I, I was like, dude, it's plan B, not plan A. He's like, speak for yourself, motherfucker. Smoking a cigarette. <laughs> like, he's like, I bought so much plan B, the pharmacist thought I was buying it for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure, like, if you take that too often, like, she's just going to be barren, just poisoning her womb forever with too much plan B. Hey, look, like, that's a I, thing, right? I have hey, a thing I, to talk about. It is a thing. I mentioned it to him. He said she knows, she doesn't care, whatever. But I'll, um, you know, birth control. Make it happen. So don't have any babies. On the whole plan thing and whatever, I, I want to come back to the AMAs, but there's someone in our life who I promise is not Jackie and I. They're having a baby. Um, they're actually older than Jackie and I. Uh, I think she's 47. Ooh, Ooh, risky business. She's 47. And uh, I, I don't want to say that it was unplanned. It was more of a, like, we'll let God decide. Happy accident. Kind of thing. Like, they, they've been... Uh, you know, I guess regularly having unprotected sex, uh, doing the sorts of things that would create a baby, but not seeing a fertility doctor or something that a normal, like a 47 year old might typically have to do. And, um, there's a, baby I'm joking about not way. using condoms. Continue. They're not using condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just felt like I, 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 I was thinking back on the things I just said and like, yeah, that was funny. That was funny. Yeah. All good. Wait, wait, did you say you don't use condoms? Let's not put that out there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Continue. Um, yeah, and I just, uh, I, I don't know even what to say. Like, I, There's lots of things I could tell you guys that I wouldn't want to say in public. They're real people that exist in our lives, and I can't uh, say anything negative. But, but 47 years old, having a baby, here we go. They've been married um, six Is or seven months. Is it that months. crazy? Oh, that's a problem. Wait, how well, they dated for almost a year prior to that. <laughs> I got no problem with this. You know, uh -huh. in this day and age with life expectancies like reaching into the 80s, you know, they, they, these people have another good 20, 20 years in them. They can get a kid into college. Like, why not? They'll be 67 20 years. They'll be, 60, they'll, they'll be 67 in the year 20... 35 or something uh -huh. like yeah a, but that, that kid's always going to have to be the kid with the old parents who can't go to the sports games and he has to push around at graduation and he's no, not going to be able to play get, catch with well, the kid 67? as much because he's old as shit well they'll be 65 that's getting up there you, yeah, you walk by your on your own at 65 but that's what she'll be 65 yeah. at, at high school graduation might be a surprise or 65. 66 because she just got pregnant that's true too oh <laughs> Well, yeah, I, that's, I don't know. How, you know what kind of sucks? That... Did, did she have kids other than that? Does she have any other children? Yeah, she has uh, two boys and an adopted girl who is the youngest. And how old are they? Like, thirty-one? Uh, no, uh, say I'm gonna get close. Eighteen, fifteen, and eleven. Oh, so she had you know, kids all pretty late then. When uh, when someone has a kid very young. I, I'm quick to judge that because I know that I know more about everything than that person does. And there aren't any 18-year-olds who know more, more more about life than me. There, there, I'm sure there's some highly intelligent 18-year-olds who know more about a, a, a large range of things. But you don't know more about life than me. I promise you don't know the repercussions of that baby better than me. So when I see someone 18 having a kid, and even younger, you know, obviously it happens all the time. You know, 15, 16, 17-year-olds having kids, I'm just like, oh, you done fucked up. But if somebody's 47... Yeah. Good In luck. some ways, it's really awesome. You know, it, babies are cool. I, I, I'm very glad that I have two kids. Um, I, I, I still I, think you should go for that third, man. Heck, I, you know, I, I, Jackie doesn't want one. That's Dude, one get of, a black kid. Uh, okay. Why? Why? Why, why a I, black kid? I don't know. May, you know, I figured Just mix it up. Is, well, is it because of the farming? Do you think I'm going cotton? First of all, they're readily available, okay? I'm so I, sorry. I figure, I figure if you want one, you just go get you one, you know? Like, uh, adopting a black baby is like picking up a deep fryer at Walmart. Like, you want one, you just go get it. It's 50 bucks or something. Okay. I figure you could go get one and make that happen pretty easily. A, white, a healthy white baby, I, I just don't think there are many of those. You get yeah, the Russia. white baby market is at an all-time high. It's uh, like they said on a... Uh, it's a like a racing I just picked Arizona. up a pair. Brother, sister. 
Bam Bam, Russian. Ooh, hmm. some Russian kids would be cool too. Yeah, they were a little messed up. They'd seen some hardcore shit. They, uh, they're wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got, um, but yeah, she's having these... a kid, and and in some ways it's it's freaking amazing, and in some ways it's kind of scary. And she's forty seven. That's there's a lot of alarms that go off with that. Um, and you know, like it, if you're over thirty five then you're kind of like a high-risk type thing. But 47, that's hardcore. Most people can't even get pregnant at 47, I think. I'm not even sure about that. But, One uh, second, I'm going to grab a drink. Oh, Kyle's going for a drink. All right, so AMA questions. A couple of these for Kyle. Yeah, let me see. Um... There's a very detailed scenario at the bottom about a serial rapist. I'm going to read through that real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh... Ooh, I've got a good question. I'm waiting for Kyle to come back. Dan, I wish, wish Kyle were here. We're ready to do this. Oh, yeah, we could just... It's the Woody Taylor Show. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. Woody and yeah, Taylor. we need some music. Oh, uh, no, that would get me copyright <laughs> that claimed. So pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I didn't make a rap. It's a joke. What happened? So, I know. <laughs> yeah, Chiz came on the show that one time, and, and he was left all alone, and he sang something. Sign up for Patreon. Go check out the... Pa Kyle's not here right now. Go click on the Patreon link in the description. Uh, you'll uh, enter to win a um, wow. Xbox One Assassin's Creed Special Edition. All right. Do you want to handle the internet veteran question or the serial killer question, Kyle? Bam. Um, Choose I was blind. Actually looking... Pardon me? Choose blind. Like, don't even look at him. Um, you just have to go grab a handful of croutons or something? A little hungry? No, I grabbed a I grabbed a drink. The um, <laughs> internet. I was like, what or or serial phone? killer? I like the serial killer one better. All uh, right, Taylor, hit it. <clears throat> there is a completely naked serial killer rapist with nunchucks on the loose. The man is described to look very deformed, with hideous scars and burns all over his body. Now this man is busting down your bedroom door while you are in the middle of self service with the Auto Blow Two and Wet and Platinum. <laughs> Just from a normal reaction, you jump out of bed with your pants between your ankles. You can take off your pants and we'll be able to grab something around the room to use as a melee weapon, but you have to fight naked as well, which the fight might lead into some ground wrestling. Or you can pull up your pants but not be able to grab a weapon from around the room, and you have to fight barehanded, which the fight would most likely <coughs> lead into ground wrestling. What would you do? Uh -huh. um, so a serial killer well, rapist comes, but I think the core of it is, do you pull up your pants and not get a weapon... Or do you um, just grab a weapon and have to fight with your with your pants? Your dick down? hanging out. Um, yeah, with your my... dick. And it says he's not only covered in burns but also deformities. So let's establish these deformities so we have a uniform sense of what we're dealing with. How about the first deformity is his penis is two feet long. I imagine <laughs> that he's got one of those things where his face is kind of smushed over the eye, like there's a flap of skin over this eye a little bit. So it's just like. Ah. Ah. A little bit like, like the hound, like that, like yeah, like a little bit like 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 a little fucked up, and like but this one, but this one's like real big, so it's just like <laughs> ah. So you get a comparison and he, there. And he kind of, and he, he's got kind of a like a weird stature, so he doesn't walk normally. He's kind of just like. I think one of his hands is a. How, how, how tall is he? Is he a very large man? No, he's like like if like if he weren't so bent over and like you know stove up crippled type, he'd be maybe six feet tall, but. The way he's lurched over, it's more like five foot nine, and he's just kind of like comes at you like this, and sort of a shuffly thing. And All right. Well, the more fired. I'm picturing him now, the more he's not like a scary, deformed guy. More of just a handicapped individual who wandered <laughs> so, into my room while I was masturbating. Think about the uh, the crippled guy from 300, the one who who like told the Persians how to get to the get behind the Spartans. Um, remember that guy? Fucked up hand. Yeah, remember how powerful yeah, he was with the spear? Yeah. FLTs! He's like throwing yeah. the <laughs> spear. I yeah. will kill many Persians, my king. Like, no. Leonidas was yeah. a dick for not letting FLTs like join the mix. He's like, uh, 
the strength of a phalanx is that we stand together. It's like, wait, aren't are, are you Scottish? Don't pay attention to my accent. Like, don't pay to my accent. We're Greece. We're Greeks. And it's cool. You're not fighting my army. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am William Wallace. Wait, wrong movie. Wrong movie. <laughs> He's like, wait, the strength no. of our phalanx is what keeps us so strong. And then they get out there, and he's like twirling around and slinging yeah. spears <laughs> and lapping heads off and doing a dance. Like, everybody's th- slow motion, 3D spinning, dodging shit, shield bumping yeah, it people. Yeah, the phalanx was just kind of like the starting position. Yeah. Kind of like everybody the running, break dancers start all together, right. and then they just kind of start doing their own thing. That's, <laughs> that's what it's really like. Oh, but I, uh, the question. So he's like FELTs. So he's pretty strong, but scary looking. Ah, so here's the thing: I have to pull my pants up and fight bare, barehanded. Okay, I'm feel safe with my with my junk waving I around. I think I'm gonna grab the auto blow off my cock and beat him with it. Is it very heavy? Uh, yeah, I think it's a satisfactory weapon. Like a toaster. Yeah. Heavy enough to club a retard, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Just get it. God. Maybe you spin it by the by the cord. Get it. Get it really yeah. going. <laughs> Bring it on, if you. Wait, dude. wait. I don't take Until it off it's my making... massive cock, and I spin it by <laughs> that. <laughs> I hit him. Yeah. Just a loud thrumming, like a helicopter noise, starts to come from how fast you're spinning Maybe... this fucking masturbatory tool. Maybe your opening move oh. is to blast him in the face, and then you go after him after you after you've came at him. No, it was. It's kind of cheating for me because, like, literally, like. In my top drawer, there is a knife and a gun, and like no, 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 like... It, it can't be that. It has to be like something goofy, like an auto blow. No weapons are in within <laughs> arm's reach. I'm telling you, what's what's like if I get out of bed and stand up, there's a gun and a knife, and there's a thirty and there's a twenty five pound dumbbell. I'm telling you, there's not really a retard trying to rip you in the bedroom, <laughs> and that's a question. And that if you say gun or knife, it's boring. <laughs> I, I admitted that it's boring, but I'm prepared for such a situation. I'm sitting here with fucking ten thousand dollars for the body armory. Like, like, oh, like this is I I do, I do these questions well. Like like uh, this is the sort of stuff I'm prepared for. Like if there's a big tech emergency and you need me to fix your server, I don't even speak the language. That you want Woody for that. But if there's a serial killer that needs taken care of, like. I'm ready to roll. So it's just it's it's just not a long it's just like pew all right, let's finish this up. Nom 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 Oh god, that's the auto blow was back in action. It took me a second. I thought you were eating for a second. You're like no, I'm not no. even gonna turn it I'm not even gonna turn it off. It's gonna be in my lap. Nom 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 and I'm just gonna be like, Alright, come on in. Kyle's yeah. like, alright, I took care of that yeah. guy. Now back to business. <laughs> The only uh, thing you're mad about is that he made you miss the one good part of the video and you have to rewind, but the mood's not the same, so you have to spend another half hour trying oh, to find ba- a better one. Bailey J already finished her own mouth. That's my go point. What you doing <laughs> to me, man? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, don't Google who uh, Bailey J is. Do ba- Google who Bailey J is. Uh, I, I know who she is. She, she was on uh, Joe Rogan's show, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she's the uh, transgender. Uh, person. Yeah, she's a very attractive man. She's the prettiest man in the world if you ask me. <laughs> what about like John Stamos? He's up there. No, Bailey J is much more fuckable than John Stamos. Mm, if, for you, yourself. you gotta you gotta blow one of them, Merka. If you're gonna blow Bailey J, who is basically a hot chick except for that penis she has. Uh-huh. Or John Stamos, who's just a good looking dude. Bailey J. Could they play the theme to Full House while they do it? <laughs> Everywhere you look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who needs you. Yeah. When you're lost out there and you're all alone. <laughs> What's the rest? Somebody's waiting to carry you home. <laughs> Everywhere you look. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. There, then it goes into the chorus. God, that show was was not good. <laughs> no. That show but was super great, popular. <laughs> But no, um, yeah, I, I would, like I would just shoot. I guess I'd have to say Bailey J. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody says Bailey J. Bailey J is very attractive man. Um, but but as far as like the bad guy breaking into my house, like I'm real prepared for that. Like I I made sure that that's not a thing that can really even conceivably happen anymore. Like I'm well armed. I'm well protected. Like there's security systems and dogs and like big doors and locks and and then there's me. So it's just not going to end well. Yeah, 
I'm a even if I'm I'm right there with you actually, and I, I know you have a hundred. No, you you guns, are you totally are. But I can only shoot one at a time. I yeah, or two. It, 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 but even at two, I can I can or handle three. that too. I attach one to the auto blow. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, but but <laughs> if you take away and the, you're a better shot, right? I I've, I've fired with Kyle before. I've been shooting with Kyle before. He's better at it. But um, but I am plenty good enough to hit someone in the same building as me. I got that more than covered, and uh, and then you know like, there's security systems, there's dogs, and then there's me, and the, like you, it just you should really pick another home. You'd be much better off if you did that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, there's so a, no one, no one else would pull their pants up and, and box them. No. Everyone else would just the no, dick absolutely out. Absolutely not. Eating. Yeah, dick uh, out, auto blow bashing. I, there was a guy who uh, who was trying to steal something out of my truck one time. We chased him down, and he had fallen off a fence, and he'd gotten all bloody in his face. And he was just a regular old, like, drug-using hobo-type guy. And I didn't even want to touch that. I didn't want to punch him because the blood, I, I didn't know what he had. Like, the last thing I want to do is punch this guy in the tooth, cut knuckle, get his blood in my hand, and now I've got fucking HIV from punching some fucking scumbag. Oh, that's I don't a wise get tale. You can't get HIV from assaulting homeless people. I think you can. <laughs> sure you can. Like, what it like, if this guy was know. doing, it, it, he had blood all over his face, and I, in my head, I was, I, I was like, and I was like, I'm not hitting this motherfucker. You hit him. I'm not fucking hitting him. Look how nasty he is. And then my friend even was like wrapping a shirt around his hand in case he had to hit the guy. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted our shit back from him. You can get HIV from having sex with women, and I would argue they give me less fluid transfer than maybe I'd get in a bloody hand situation. Yeah, I think I, yeah, it's, it's true. Their blood. The, their blood has to get in, has to get on you where your skin is broken, or there's a mucous membrane. In any case, I wasn't gonna hit the fucking drug using hobo because that's exactly what it was. What it was. It turned out that he had he had grabbed my uh, my expensive sunglasses, and then when we started chasing them, immediately had like thrown them away. So like they they ended up in the back of my truck and like smushed. So even worse than stealing my two hundred dollars shades, I he put them somewhere where no one knew that they were, and they just got smushed and destroyed. So. Fuck that guy. New question. I'm glad he fell off the fence. What's your favorite PKA moment? Oh. Favorite PKA moment. Favorite moment. Well, so much history to look back on. There There's a lot, a lot of, of hours. Yeah. No, there are. Well, I guess I could pick one that I wasn't there for. Hmm. Um. Huh. I liked when I prank phone called that guy. There were a few prank phone calls of mine that I enjoyed. There was one where I convinced I convinced a woman. I think she was like she was selling something on Craigslist, and I call her, and I don't even want to talk about what she's got for sale. I tell her that instead I'm answering answering her personal ad. She, I'm like, you know, you're like a uh, mid thirties, maybe forty, very good looking, blah blah blah. And it turned out that I just guessed what she looked like, and she was into it all of a sudden. She was willing to like go along with maybe there's a guy on the phone who was interested in her. I was like, says here, you're looking for a young, good looking guy. I'm 25 years old, good looking. I got my own house, got my own car. I live about 25 minutes away from you. I'd like to take you out on a date, very respectful. I'm just looking at your picture. I think you're very attractive. I'd like to meet you, spend some time with you. And she. Bought it, <laughs> and she was on board, and she was like ready to. We we like exchanged email addresses or something. Like, like we were totally gonna. I, she lived in like Washington or something, but but I I got her hook line and sinker. Uh, there was the guy selling the Playboys. I convinced him to run a bubble bath. We told him we were gonna take a bubble bath together for a markdown on the Playboys he was selling. That was he my started favorite running one. Water. I remember that. Yes, yeah, he started that, running the fucking water. So the guy was um, selling porn. And Kyle convinced him to cut him a discount if he took a bubble bath with him and did who knows what. That was yeah. good. Um, the rape squad killer thing, uh, I, I don't Ooh. think that was as big of a deal as everyone set out to be. It was funny, I thought. Um, but as I listened back to it, I'm not going to point any fingers, but certain members in the call were just always on the line of ruining the thing and I, I kept like I kept I felt like that we were just kind of holding it together to keep certain people from destroying it. I thought it was a good thing. Because they went forward too fast. Yeah. 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 Like and, one guy's and asking like for trash out. bags and latex gloves and the next guy's asking for like a coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wings is like, do they cover the blood? The blood from the murder? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it Wings you're talking about? Yeah, Wings was Wings was pretty bad. And I think Taylor the sub was pretty bad too. I, I Wings did okay, but I, the Taylor of the sub I think was the worst at that. 
Uh, I think I thought Bash was doing a pretty good job with us. Yeah, and, uh, Bash. I'd like to get him well. on again. Um, yeah, Bash, cool guy. Yeah. I'll never forget when I saw him one night. Uh, we were all like meeting up at some like some Chinese restaurant or something in Boston, Philadelphia, Boston or Seattle. I don't remember which. And I just remember like it was dark. His big fucking smile. Like you, it's a stereotype about black people. Like smile, I can't see you because when it's dark out. But like when that guy smiled in the dark, it was like. Holy shit, that's Bash. Bash <laughs> has dark skin yeah, and glorious right teeth. Right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I I think it was the PKA after show where we all wrestled at paintball in the hotel room. That might have been my favorite <laughs> PKA moment. Oh, you beat up white boy. <laughs> that was before PKA, if I remember right. But that was fun. I remember. So, uh, that whole beat up white Is boy. Is that when thing, we wrestled? Uh, Maybe. It might have been the uh, same no. trip, but what, what happened with White Boy, like, so I had put up a video of me and a dog collar barking, and um, uh, it was in Pets and Animals. It was, like, number two or something, and only two videos got on the front page, and White Boy saw that he had more views on a video than that one did, and that he could take the spot. And uh, But it was so, currently in, like, gaming or something. It was currently in somewhere it, else. It, yeah, it was somewhere else where... He didn't have enough views to get on the front page. So, for right. example, he was in films and animation. I think he was in music where it belonged. He was in music okay. where it belonged because he basically he, he went to somebody's studio. I don't know if he was a big star or not, and he couldn't show the guy's song or anything because it wasn't out yet. But he just sort of showed that he visited some guy in a studio, and uh, then he reclassified his video and bumped mine off the front page. And I had felt really wronged because, like when white boy was doing all the giveaways and like Hutch and C Nanners and Freddie W and the whole world seemed to be lining up against him. But it's not that I was really thinking that giveaways were right. Like it's kind of manipulating the YouTube search algorithm and you know, it was what it was, but, uh, um, white boy was my friend. So I was good to white. Boy. <laughs> and then when he had an opportunity to like take from me and put himself on the homepage, he grabbed it. And uh, he's repeated that trend a lot. But um, uh, so anyway, I made a video and, and you know, talked about it, I guess, and said I feel like I was kind of, kind of stabbed in the back. And then he did this video called The Truth. And it was total bullshit. It was complete lies. And um, uh, like it, it really bothered me. And I talked to him about it afterwards. And he's like, yeah, that none of that was true. Because he was sticking to this thing like, like he never changed the category on the video. And I was like, well, white boy, how can that be? Cause I had at the time YouTube did these accolades, like, you know, second in Canada and I you know, those. this and, in, in um, <laughs> yeah. And you could see like your, my video is getting all these accolades. And I was like, white boy, if what you're saying is true, then why would I have all those accolades? He goes, Oh yeah, well I lied. None of that was ever true. And um, so I was mad at him. Like I was genuinely mad at him. And I don't know if you've ever been, not that we had a fight or anything, but um, I guess we we kind of said we buried the hatchet, but in my heart of hearts, it was like, I raped your sister, and I'm not mad at you anymore. I'm willing to bury the hatchet. And you're like, wait, like, I'm still wronged in this thing. Like, you, you, you didn't treat me well when you bumped me off the front page, and then you made a big video telling all these lies about me, and now we agreed to like let it go, and I didn't feel like like I hadn't yeah. gotten any maybe kind not of... quite sister rape, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> I hadn't gotten any justice yet. Like I, I was really upset because you know like he had done all the bad, and then we just agreed to like not be mad anymore. And it's like well that's that there's just no justice. And then we went to this paintball event and. Um, uh, I don't know. Somehow it got to be that we were going to wrestle or something. And, um, in, in, and you put white boy in a guillotine uh, yeah. and choked him virtually unconscious. I, oh, I, it, it was quick kind of, but I put him in a guillotine and Doesn't take uh, long. it was a standing guillotine and I arched my back to, to kind of like, you know, apply the choke. A guillotine, if you don't know, his head's like in here and you kind of like crank it up. And it hits you a windpipe. It's a really, really unpleasant choke. And um, I hit it right away. 
And he's so light. He's so little that I, I picked Surprisingly. His... <laughs> you're like, I hit it right away. His defense was very poor. His jujitsu was just yeah, not he, good that day. He didn't have any kind of experience in this. So so when I cranked it, um, his feet got pulled off the ground, right? And his legs are kind of dangling in the air. And I he thought they I thought they might have been, but I like I couldn't see. I'm like I wanted his feet off the ground, but I didn't know that I was getting it. I thought he might have been on tippy toes, like but I've seen it on video and I, yeah, he's just hanging by his throat upside down for a little while. And uh, <laughs> he doesn't know the concept of tapping. And I'm fine with that. Don't tap. Fucking that's your choice, bitch. And uh, Kyle's like, in the background, you can hear him. You better tap. You better tap. And, uh, and then he tapped and I let him go. Yeah, because I have a full-blown career of getting beaten up by Woody. So, like, I know... <laughs> I'm not getting out of this one. Let's go. All right. Yep. Because this is usually where his hands are, like like wrapped around my neck. And he, I'm always getting choked. Like it's never like an arm. I don't think you've ever gotten me in anything but chokes. It's. it's uh, I know there's been a I bunch feel, of chokes. Yeah, but you're right. I, I tend a to a lot hit... of chokes. Yeah. I, I often end up in uh, a, a, a one choke or another. It's all, I've been in the guillotine. You've gotten me on the ground a few different times. Naked, naked choke. Chokes. No gi. Uh, Ezekiel. Yeah. I've hit those. Anyway. Lots of stuff. Sometimes I'll just be on my back and I'm just like, well, I got nowhere to go from here. You're <laughs> suffocating me with your presence. I can't wiggle out. If I try to like wiggle down, at, you just, you know, you're shifting your way. You've, this is like, like if you've probably spent more time training on how to sit on top of somebody than most than anything. Yeah, like, yeah. like that's probably where most of your training is. And it, it's just, I'm just like, I'd like to get up now. So Could I. You, Hop so, off. <laughs> so I've got White Boy dangling in the air by his, his windpipe, and uh, Kyle tells him to tap, and he does. And after that, for at least a while, I was kind of able to bury the hatchet and just be like, all right, now I have the justice I've been looking for. You know, Prior to that, it was just him like knowingly pretty much taking money from me and then knowingly like trashing my name on the internet and then saying, Woody, I'm willing to let it go. And, uh, and it was like, well, fuck, you know, this doesn't seem fair, uh, until I choked him and then it seemed more fair. Yeah. And I don't think he really hurt him or anything. It, it hurt funny. for a couple of days. I know that. Yeah. He, yeah, I mean the hurt. next day, cause it was a whole weekend at paintball and he's like, <laughs> you know, Woody, this still hurts. Like, yeah, it'll do that. So, uh, um, and I was <laughs> oh, fine sorry, white that. boy, my bad, man. No, no, not at all. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you know, I remember during our private conversation, I was like, you know, white boy, you're here telling everyone you lied. You know, what if I, what if I made this public? And he's like, I'll just keep going. You mess with the bull, <laughs> and uh, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. And, and you know, white boy in social media is no joke. So it was like, I just, I just don't want this anymore. If if it was drama and there's a a winner, he won, and uh, um. You know, but if you're going to wrestle with me, you fucking mess with the bull, you get the horns. Yeah, your neck hurts for the next three days. It's supposed to. So, <laughs> uh, like, that's, so there's a that's, story that's my white boy story. I don't even know how we got onto that. Uh, favorite PKA yeah, moment. That's your favorite oh, PKA yeah, moment. Oh, yeah. It was really wrestling with the guys in fun. Kyle Murka, I think, <laughs> wrestled with Aviator at one point, T Mart. That was what I was talking about. Someone else brought up the white boy thing, which wasn't, uh, which wasn't to me, a That would have been moment. funny if the best moment in PKA was you spite choking white boy. Out of all the conversations, <laughs> everything. It was just, just a. I had him right here. Fuck, you don't you take my pets and animals video? Like, just, I can feel yeah. the. I can feel the life draining from his little it body. It wasn't just the, like that he I took me. It up a little more. <laughs> if it was someone I didn't know, it'd be a very different situation, right? Like, um, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly close to Ali A, right? I don't think I've ever spoken to him, whatever. If he took my spot, it'd be like, ah, oh, you know, bummer. But it was like, white boy, I put my neck on the line for you for like a year, right? When you had no friends, you had me. And then... You know, when it comes time for you to like, if you see an opportunity to, to you know, take money from me, you jump on it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I would do that shit all the time. You know, it's just like switching categories. I got no problem with that. A lot of my videos, I felt, I honestly, in my heart, felt could go in multiple yeah. categories. Right. I'm a film, film and animation, entertainment. Um, um, there, how there to? Were more how to in style. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sports. Like my shit could fit into any of that stuff realistically. Um, it's not that big of a stretch of animation. Now, 
I don't. Th I think I only once put a video in like nonprofit, but I honestly just didn't see. I didn't know it was a big deal. I didn't. I I didn't grasp it that I shouldn't do that. And you know the video got like three million views or something, but like I didn't see anything wrong with it. Uh, and like the 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 video that I beat was some bullshit video anyway. It was teaching how to how to yeah, do yeah about some charity. It, no, it was about, it, no, it was literally uh, I remember it was about algebra. It was they it was these um there was a series of videos that wasn't very popular that taught people how to do fucking high school math, and I crushed that shit. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> their own page, but 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 shifting it around, I had no problem with that. I would. I, I particularly enjoyed, because uh, I could dominate like m almost every category. Uh, I particularly enjoyed taking away the um, the makeup girls shit, because <laughs> like they'd be on there, you know, like how to apply eyeliner, and I'd be like, watch this shit. Two hours, they're gonna disappear. I'd change my video to how to in style, and like two hours later, their shit's got like 180 thousand views. They're on the homepage. My shit's got 365 thousand views after like the first <laughs> update, and there it's just like, blink, you click refresh, I'm on the homepage. Sometimes I'd have four squares, like somehow. Yeah. Like I would have top favorited, most viewed, um, and I'd be winning in my category. And for some weird refresh reason, I hadn't left the category that I was originally in, so I had it too. <laughs> it was just absurd stuff used to be able to happen with the home page. But. Yeah, I was at a level where if I tried really hard, I could sometimes hit the home page. I was never a lock like you, but... I, you know, it was like, all right, this one I think is worthy. I'm going to ask for some favorites. Then if you get some favorites, you might have enough views. Like, I might have enough views to like get in a category too. And, and who was that scumbag who had the favorite bot? Uh, that redhead guy. Um, he had a, he had a favorite bot and he, the Yo Mama videos. And, yeah, and, he, yeah. and, and he could only do like 10,000 favorites, but and I've been accused of using bots before. Mm -mm. What I have is an incredible fan base. Yeah. When I when I ask my fans to favorite a video, I don't get ten thousand. I get twenty or thirty thousand. Or I get forty. Than, yeah. Or forty. I've got like like go back and watch um, the videos when I actually verbally ask for likes. They've got two hundred, three hundred thousand likes. If I ask for likes, they'll get a hundred or two hundred thousand likes. They just do it because you ask them to. What the I don't hell was that guy's all. name? Was there hot in his name? Yeah, hot, 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 hot. Um, he made a song about Cinnabons. He used to do song parodies. Yeah. Um, anyway, I have no idea. Yeah. Well, anyway, you about? could you could see it like on on his uh, on his statistics. <clears throat> like the video would go from thirty five favorites to ten thousand in one update. And the, that was the thing. So you would hit eleven thousand. No, no, it, it you could see it. Like the video would be a day old. It would get like thirty thousand views, and then as it was two days old. It would get 10,000 favorites, instantly hit the homepage, get all its views. And, and if you're, if you're like schooled in this sort of thing, that's not what videos do, right? They don't like come out flat and then skyrocket later or something, you know, like you sort of come out of the gate, all your subs see it and decline from there. Mm -hmm. He, uh, and his would consistently just sort of flop and then launch up as he put himself on the homepage. And, uh, yeah, yeah. but it, it was, it, it wasn't a favorite Bot, but YouTube used to have this system where you could get other channels to favorite you. Yeah, like, so programmatically. So, basically, so he had it was this, network based. Well, he had a, a website where people would sign up and mm. give him permission to favorite on their behalf. So oh. it wasn't like they were all fake people. They were just people that didn't even know they were favoriting your video. Ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good idea actually. It mm. it had something to do with oh, there used to be a a website. I forget the name of it. Yeah, I, I, this is all kind of coming back to me now. Yeah, as uh, you signed up for him on that website, you also gave him permission to favorite on behalf of you. And he got like 10,000 people to do it and he could just put himself on the homepage all the time. So. Machinima had um, some of us referred to it as the favorite bot, whatever mm -hmm. you wanted to call it. Favorite switch. And basically what it was is they asked the directors if they'd like to take part in a program where they would give the home base permission to to use their account to add favorites and likes to certain videos and the idea was that hey let's all sign up for this thing and when someone really shines when they when they go above and beyond you know they spend five ten thousand dollars budget to make a video uh, they make you know their best video this year or something like that we all favorite it and that way you know we're exposing our our big fan base to the best of our content that was the idea and I was part of that thing. I think we used it on my videos twice. Like, like, like twice they used the uh, the thing. Um, but it, it wasn't that it added um, 
a lot of favorites. It just showed up in the feeds of other channels that it had been favorited. The, the goal wasn't to gain a lot of favorites to dupe the system. The goal was simply to share my video with with everyone's fans. Yeah. Or to I and, and I did the that. same. I never got the uh, advantage of it. Like you did. You got a couple of videos that, that were the beneficiary of it. Me, mm -hmm. I was always the grantor. You know, you'd show up on my page. And I was a pretty popular channel. You know, I, I never broke top 100 on YouTube, but I was often, almost daily, top 100 in growth, right? And, and like current views and stuff like that. Like I remember one day some hater was telling me something and, and it was like I was, I was 68th in views and 69th in growth on the same day. And that was normal for me, you know? So I was pretty active but i would make like a song parody video which to me was like something that i thought would be you know worth it maybe like a shucks you or something and i'd ask machinima for the push and they're like nah i don't think so you know we've got something else scheduled for the push and it was like that's just well, them being scumbags yeah they're they were scumbags and this is all new management now but they're they're real shitheads and and it's like well woody we're cool with Showing other people's stuff to your fan base, but showing you stuff to their fan base, nah, fuck you, Woody. And yeah. uh, but there's some my, other stuff that was good for me, I guess. And, and that's a, and it's bullshit anyway, because I remember a situation where like the guy who um, one of the owners of Machinima was staying at my house, mm -hmm. and uh, and I showed him the video that we were about to upload, or maybe we we had already uploaded it that day. I was like, look at this shit. And I think it was the flamethrower video or a tank or minigun. It was something a little above and beyond. And uh, and he was like, oh shit, we gotta push this. He gets on the phone. He's like, hey, we gotta push this thing. Uh, I, I don't fucking care. I don't care. Take your shit off. Like, <laughs> nah, push this shit. Yeah, network wide, everybody, all the partners. <laughs> and then like, sure enough, like five minutes later, it was like somebody went in the back and went, we got one. <laughs> like pulled a big switch because like network wide, everybody suddenly liked my video. And I'm talking about like a like like an extra like 400 likes and extra 400 favorites, which uh, I just want to make sure people understand. It's not uh, you're not trying to gain those favorites to dupe the favorite system. I wasn't trying to become the most favorited video, or the most liked video. I already was, quite frankly. Showing up in uh, everybody's feed. It's just showing up in everybody's feed yeah. in the machine of my network. So those, that was always great. The one thing, but it only I knew signing was up was for the that, dancing that I would never get a benefit by getting in the dancing competition. Like, that was a lot of money that I was able to win. A lot of that was sort of self-made. I mean, everyone got in it. Well, not everyone. But a couple of people got in it. Xtraws had the same opportunity I did, etc. cetera. But, um, but I, in the end, I won, like, I don't know if I talked about this before, but I won thirty seven five, like over $37,000 in that dance competition. That's and, awesome. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, right? a, I'm a pretty That's good more dancer. That's than I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a lot of money. And, um, uh, you know, some of that was for winning, and then some of that was just for showing. And I had to, you know, do two rounds and stuff. But, uh, you know, and, and like I said, you know, most people didn't take nearly that. A 25 of that was for being the winner. And uh, and that wasn't Machinima's doing, making me win. But still, there was an opportunity, and it meant a lot. You know, that was the, um, I think I had 60-something left on my house at the time. So I took that, like, 37 with money that I had saved, and it was no more mortgage. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, so, my um, favorite PKA moment mm -hmm. is uh, actually when Anthony Cumia was on the show. I'd listened oh. to Opie and Anthony, that show, for a while. And they didn't have Jim Norton on there. It's really funny and raunchy, like kind of like the Stern show a little bit. And that was just really cool to get to actually talk to him and, like, joke around with him, you know, play off of each other. Like, I don't know. I, I, I thought about that before. Like, oh, I wonder for if it's really show. awkward or whatnot. We could go on his show. We, we should totally do that. That would be pretty sick. You, yeah, we've been invited. We've been invited to his podcast. We should be. Uh, we should be more on top of that. I, I would like to hang out with him again. Yeah, do the that thing. would be cool. He's into guns, and into yeah. booze. So fun guy. He he's hates the guy. blacks. You, <laughs> he's another guy where you don't want to invade his house. It's a situation yeah. he's prepared for. So so don't do it. Whole other question. I've got um, one I've been looking at. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's addressed got? to me, but I, I think it, it fits all of us. Woody, you see yourself as an internet veteran. I do too. I, and by that, he means he's also an internet veteran. Although I'm only 19 years old, I've seen some shit. I started going on sites as 4chan <laughs> when I was 14, and to some extent, I think it's messed a lot with my mind site. It's most likely affected me in a somewhat negative way, if I'm honest, because of my age. 
Nowadays, kids barely grow hair on their balls before they're accustomed with gore, fights, world star, and of course a massive amount of porn. What's your opinion when the new internet culture has become a norm with a lot of people? I don't think it's as big of a deal as we think it is. I think we, the last, uh, this last generation has been so coddled and sheltered that we don't know what the real world is like anymore. And it's, it's good to get some of that gore, porn, and fights mixed into your 14-year-old brains because that's what the world's like to a certain extent. Uh, there's bad things that happen. It's, it's good to know about them. Now, they don't happen every yeah. day, but you shouldn't be just taken back and your world shattered the first time one of those bad things happen. I've seen some bad yeah. shit on the Internet. I think we all have. But... I think I don't think it makes us. I think it makes us better people, not worse. If if we can see those horrible things, those terrible things that happen in this world, then maybe it'll help us appreciate the good a little more. And I have be a like, hey, opinion. Hey, I burnt my yeah, turkey, but I didn't get my head sawed off on the in the sands of <laughs> Afghanistan. Because if sucks. anything, we need more gore, porn, and bestiality, <laughs> nastiness all over. So then, when something bad happens, oh, I got in a minor car accident. Well, at least nobody. You know, broke a glass bottle in my asshole. At least, at least that didn't happen. Yeah, at least I wasn't yeah, raped by a seal. A, a horse didn't you know, fuck me down. Pinned down by a seal and raped. <laughs> yeah, I, that was more rapey than I imagined it would be. Very like, rapey. Really <laughs> a little bit yeah. rapey. <laughs> uh, like, I'm on a Cosby different take on, on this thing. So uh, I feel like for ages, longer than I've been around, they've been saying kids grow up so fast. And I think there's a certain truth to it. I think if you were to look at my mom, you know, who would be like your grandmom, you know, then that uh, they retained a certain amount of innocence and childlike behavior until like 17, 18 years old when they started to, you know, grow up. Nowadays, uh, six years earlier than that, they probably had the same amount of like world exposure. And like you said, it's because of, you know, porn sites and sites like 4chan and even Reddit and you see all kinds of different things. And I, I don't think it's great for you, but I don't think it's anything new. It's just a trend that's been going on for over a hundred years now. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that you'll be surprised when your kids grow up so fast yeah. because they've seen stuff. I could also see the exact opposite of what Kyle's saying, where it, like seeing all that shit could be an excuse for people to be like, oh, I've seen some shit. I know what the world's like. Mm -hmm. I just need to look at my screen. I can garner all the information I need for every, you know, question of life. When, So it might actually trick you, like, if you're watching a bunch of fight videos and you're just like, yeah, I could take that motherfucker. Yeah, I'm tough. <laughs> I've watched lots of these. And then you get out in the real world and you just get your shit rocked in. You probably learned a lot more from that real ass beating than from watching all those internet videos. So it's valuable to know it's out there, but you can't use it like street cred or pretend that you have some insight into things when you've never really been there because like it's not that hard to watch a death on the internet frankly as long as it's not super personal or torturous if you just see someone die you can even laugh at it like if somebody falls off a you know freight liner and does something really stupid and bangs their head off a pipe like people laugh at those gifts when they're like put his responses to jokes and forums like it's really not that difficult to see hmm hmm yeah this true. next one's tough for me what is something you enjoy that no one knows about? Hmm. That I, I, girl in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I've been such an open book for so many years now. Uh, you know, heck, it's hard to tell a story without having told it before. A secret cereal. that I've... Like, what's that? Cereal. I love cereal. I'm a professional cereal eater. I like all kinds of cereal. I like different kinds of milk with it. I make my own. Sp I have a very special cereal uh, situation that I go through. I put the bowl in the freezer, let it get ice fucking cold. The cereal stays in the freezer, so it's ice cold. I like to mix and match my cereals. I, uh, last night I had some chocolate uh, cinnamon toast crunch and some peanut butter <laughs> cinnamon toast crunch. Mixed them together, put some whole organic milk in there. Delicious. It was like a Reese's peanut butter cup cereal. Thing. I like I like to let it get soggy. I like my cereal if soggy. If only that existed. It does exist at my house. Uh, I like to get my I like my cereal to be super soggy. I don't want it all crunchy. I like uh, like banana nut crunch. All kinds of fruit in there. Raisin brands good. Um, uh, I, Cinnabon ice cream. Like all that stuff. I, I love uh, not ice cream cereal. I, I love cereal. I'm a big cereal fan. I've got lots of cereal in my house. I eat it all the time, and it's probably like one of my favorite foods. Cereal. I've probably talked about it before. I don't know if it qualifies enough, but I like fire. 
I like fucking fire. I like the smell of fire. I like the warmth from a fire. I like the look of a fire. I like the challenge of starting a fire, which isn't really so hard. Whenever I go camping, I'm the guy that starts the fire, always. We'll go camping in the summertime, and I make a bonfire, and I'm bummed that more people don't want to be around it. I... Uh, one of the things I'm excited about in my new home is that it has a fire pit in the backyard and we're going to burn some shit and, uh, and and sit there and look at the embers, I hope, uh, that, that uh, other people in my family like it as much as I do, that, that some days we'll swap out TV for, for burning embers. Um, have you seen those? When, uh... oh, oh, I have one more thing. When I smell clothes that have been exposed to campfire, I'm like, yes. This I know that feeling. Actually. I remember That's, that day. I enjoy yeah. that. The yeah. smell of campfire. Um, have you seen those fire? It's not a fire pit. It's like a, it's like a big marble table with a, a round hole in the middle that they fill with like those glass beads, and then they set the glass beads on fire. So you have this hot marble table out in your patio. No, but that sounds great. They're they're really yeah, cool. They're they got them, cool. You can get them on Amazon. They're like uh, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. It's it's like. Uh, it's this big patio mm. table that has a hole in the middle where it, that, and it's on fire. It's like lava, rocks, or glass beads, and you can like customize what kind of, you know, much like the media that they put in uh, aquariums, you can get different glass beads. And I don't know how they burn. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm get, they put some sort of fuel on them and set them on fire. Propane. The whole, propane, there you go. Yeah, they're called, well, this one's called a patio heater, and it's a table with what seems to be glass in it. And, uh, and it, it fires through propane. I just happen to have boatloads of propane. My, my house is heated with propane. And uh, we have a tank that looks like a bomb in the back. Well, this looks cool. How big? How big is the tank? It's a thousand gallons. Holy shit. That's a pretty big tank. Yeah, which is nice because we're going to have a standby generator. So we'll be like good for a week if we choose to. Now, is it the kind that sits like this, like on its side? Or is it a vertical type tank? Must be on its side. Okay, so it's silver, and in the middle it's got that little cap that like raises off. Real close, but it's white. Cool. It's okay. It's painted white. Yeah. It's a. Gotcha. Uh, you know, if it were a smaller yard, I I guess I'd call it an eyesore. You know. It, and it's it, definitely it, propane, not natural gas. Without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, but it so it's kind of an eyesore, but it's so big and it's almost a farm, and you know, it's uh, it kind of fits. Like yeah, that's where the thousand gallon propane tank is. I, I, I think the previous owners went through, you know, for comparison, something like four hundred gallons a year. So it's it's about two years worth of propane that it holds. I got like a uh, like a forty five gallon tank. You can throw it over your shoulder, but it's a it's a real. It's like it's two head. of those grill ones. Yeah. Oh, is it um? Is it silver and kind of like a keg? No. This one's it it's it's tall vertical and like pill shaped like a capsule it's it's tall and skinny and when you've got it like it's long maybe it's 90 gallons this thing's big like it's it's like 5 feet long and you, it, when i get it on my shoulder it's it feels like it weighs like 50 pounds or something anyway i got two of those motherfuckers and i've been saving them up for a a fun little video where you know just go ahead and fill them up with 90 gallons of propane and hit them with like a m60 <laughs> uh, with some incendiary ammo so that may or may not be coming up. I got my Mark 46, you know, the big belt-fed machine gun I was showing off at the last PKN. I got it running nice. That thing had a lot of issues, but um, I've had two Just different gunsmiths work on it. something out there. If you're going to do something with propane canisters and, you know, you're using a, a FPS brushes in this thing, maybe a Molotov cocktail would be, be appropriate. Just saying. But no, it wouldn't. <laughs> I know you want it to be. I know that. <laughs> you want it real bad. I can tell. You talk uh -huh. about it a lot. It just, it just doesn't work. You, why wouldn't it work? <sighs> Give me the setup again. Okay, so um, you've got the the um, the propane tank, right? Now I'm thinking. If it's if it's a normal person, right? I don't, maybe you're a freaking ex baseball player or something. But if it's me, I don't know that I can hit the propane with a Molotov cocktail from a safe distance because you might want to be back a bit. So perhaps you're you've got propane tanks with propane like jetting out the sides. So but, a limited amount of time. Right. So what you do is you put like you make like a small little brick area with pavers, and and that way the Molotov cocktail can land almost anywhere near the propane tank. 
and then it will explode. You, It'll set the general vicinity on fire. And then well, how do you get it to jet the propane first? Shoot it. Okay, so I, I shoot it. Now there's a hole in it, and it's jetting propane. Right. Now I throw a Molotov cocktail at it, and there's it's sort of sitting on like a brick patio type area. So so, if so that you don't Molotov have to hit it directly. Anywhere around, we get a fire, and then it lights it off. Yeah, okay. That's that's the that's uh, plan A. You know, we can modify the plan from there, but uh, you know, that's that's what I'm thinking. So part of the problem is that Molotov cocktails are destructive devices. Oh, and right. While, and while nobody's going to check up on you in your backyard if you make one and throw it in a fire pit, if I made one and put it on the internet, then I it, I would need to go through the process of registering it first. I'm completely licensed to do that, but I just have to do it. it I'd have to do a piece of paperwork and then fax the thing off to BATF every time I made a Molotov cocktail, from my understanding of the thing. And... Second of all, I don't know if you've ever thrown one. They're hard to throw because you've got a beer bottle, gasoline's in it, there's a flaming rag hanging out the top. You, you, you know, you got to hold it so the thing's not dripping on you, the fire that is, but you can't hold it upside down or it's going to spill out. And, and so when you throw it, you know, you imagine you throw up a beer bottle. Like, the beer's going to slosh out the end. Yeah, like I pictured it. It sloshes on you. I can like you've got to throw it from the bottom just right. And, right. And so, I feel like so I can throw you, a regular beer bottle because just the spin action of it keeps the beer in the where it's supposed to be. Right. It doesn't it doesn't throw out the the top. Yeah. But if the top is flaming, then it adds a complexity I didn't really think of. You have to grab <laughs> it like this. So like I've never thought about this either. The semantics yeah. of throwing the Molotov cocktail. This would be annoying. You, you grab it like this, and you throw it like, like that. Like a javelin almost. Yeah, and and it, you can you can flip it at the end, and then it can do a backspin, and it, it's not going to matter. But if you do it like this, like if I if I held it like this and then whipped it like that, right, then the liquid just sprays everywhere, and there's fire, and I catch on. Or fire. it might not. If you were to grab it by the the opening enough, it, it should spin and and hold it in the back. I think you can't grab it by the opening though, because the fire. You know, and if you do the fire, wait, wait, and I have if a you thing. Welder's gloves? Well, here's the thing about that. If you were to grab the end of the bottle with the welder's gloves, now you've got the bottle in your hand, you're holding it, bottle's coming down here, flaming part supposedly out here. When you let go, the way it's going to work is the bottle's going to leave your hand, and it's going to drag behind that flaming rag, and it's going to try to pull it through a leather glove, and the leather glove's going to catch it, and it's going to pull it out of the bottle at least a little bit, and the whole thing's going to come apart, and there's going to, and the grass in front of you catches on fire. This might require a few practice throws. Now, I'm, I'm saying... How did drunk Russians do this all the time? They don't. <laughs> it can't be this hard. <laughs> they, 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 Thank you. So, but what you could do is, is what I did. You could put some road flares behind that motherfucker, and you could shoot it with a a big fucking rifle, and that'll get the job done real nice. Are you, are you showing something that's off? That's the a completely different What's thing. What's in your lap? Now. Nothing. I, I thought you were like, you know. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I thought there was something in your lap. You're like, so what you could do, and you start like fiddling with the thing, and it's like, no, come, yeah. just the liar. <laughs> but maybe you're not doing that. I thought there was something. No, I was gonna show you a video. Oh, so, oh like, okay. It, it's a keyboard you probably grabbed. It was a keyboard. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, but drunk Russians seem to do this so competently. I, I it True. Seems, seems like we could pull it off. I don't know. So, I just, I, I, I can't seem to get past the whole Russian, um, uh, Molotov cocktail connection. Skip to a minute and eight, a minute and 15 seconds in this video. All right. I can do that. And you'll oh. see what happens when you puncture a hole in one of these propane tanks. Now, I suppose you could secure it to the ground. All right. Whoever did the color correction on this likes yellow. <laughs> Are we ready? Was it you? Yeah. No. Uh, no. All right. Ready, set, play. Yes, they're dancing around. So it turns out, movies are bullshit, as usual. Let me show so you what we you skip to forward to really make this thing to, go off the fireball. Uh, 154. Okay, so... You'll see the new setup I have, which is road flares attached to the propane tanks. And 
I, and that's why, like, I don't think you want to be within throwing distance of these things. <laughs> this is. I need to do this. <laughs> Propane tanks are dangerous, definitely dangerous. You never want to strap rope flares and explosive to propane tanks <laughs> and then shoot them with your high-powered rifle. So I think we definitely yeah, learned so something there. Yeah, really so that last one's the coolest one. Yeah. What, at, three, at 2.53 where I kick it? Oh, no, I was saying like 2.30 where it's like spitting all the gas out and it's like a oh, yeah. just like peel a of flame. flame. Yeah, like a torch. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, I don't want to be that close to them, you know, because somebody's going to shoot them, and then the, it's going to be, like, leaking that shit, and then you got to throw the thing, and all you're going to get is that you could do better, is, is what I'm saying. What you really want to do to make a propane tank cool is you, you have to, you have to hit it with something so big that it comes apart, because even what I did there with that 50, yeah, it's cal, 50 cal, it just, it's pretty good. it just punched, it's no good, it's not big enough, it punched a hole like this. Um, so you need to shoot it with something bigger than a 50 cal, something like a cannon, um, a 20 millimeter, you know, a 76 millimeter tank gun, something like that. Um, so that's I'm gonna do that soon. Hmm. So because then they just completely peel apart and they release all their fuel at the same time, rather than turning into like a blowtorch. So Taylor, hmm. something you enjoy that no one knows about? Did you answer that question? Oh, I didn't. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was um, cereal. Yeah, yours was cereal. Mine was fire. I like to, to like manufacture and completely... I think other people probably do this. Like I like to make up arguments and then either in my head or in the shower or in the car like argue back at people that maybe even didn't exist. Like They just maybe... I imagine someone cuts in line with me at the grocery store and then I'll just think for like 15 minutes about what I would say or what could happen. And I really get a lot of enjoyment out of that. So that's kind of weird. So I like to run through like lots of different scenarios in my head. So, and I feel like that I do it so much that I'm prepared for virtually any situation. Um, like, like, like ridiculous situations, you know, like all the time. I, I, like, to, I like to run through, the, through those and, you know, all the various outcomes and, and think about how I react and the best ways to react. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's not just serious ones, right? You think of stupid ones too. Of like course. you'll think of stupid Like if someone, you know, sneezes on your shoes at the supermarket, you can't let that sort of infringement stand, what would you do? Like, yes. And then you, you have like a rough draft one where you're like, hey, asshole! You're like, no, no, he came in too strong on that one. You start again. <laughs> I was walking the other night, and some guy stepped on the back of my shoe, and he did it twice. In my head, I start thinking, what do we do after he does it the third time? What do we say? We have to say something after the third time. But what do we say? And I'd already figured out how this was going to go down. I was going to stop. I was going to turn around. I was going to make sure the whole traffic stopped. I was like, hey, man, stepped on my shoe. Really friendly-like. And let's see where it went from there. But he didn't step on my shoe again, luckily. So we made it out of the Mexican flea market alive. <laughs> yes, but now that you had a plan, didn't part of you want him to do it? Oh, yeah. I was hoping he'd say something. Yeah. I wanted to get in a fight at the Mexican flea market a little bit. Because he was fucking stepping on my shoe. Yeah, he was. Give you two flat tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I had boots on, so it didn't hurt, but it was just the principle of the whole thing. I was like, hey, man, you clearly know you stepped on it the first time. Came back for more. Can't do it a third time. i got to say something. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, yeah, I like to go through scenarios. Come on, you have to do that, Woody, right? Uh, not to the Every extent that you guys seem to. Uh, sometimes I'll talk about arguments that I've already had. And it's not that I'm preparing for the future. It's that I'm, you know, recapping and uh, doing sort of a post-mortem. Maybe perhaps why I got my ass kicked in an argument. Yes. Mm. You got to, mm. you know, make halftime adjustments. Make <laughs> sure you're, you're on point with everything. Yeah, if this ever happens again, I'm going to come here. Hey, let's, let's pick a time to do this crunchy roll thing, you and I. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do that. So, so just, just to refresh anyone who maybe wasn't here at the beginning of the show, maybe you're just tuning in, which doesn't even make sense because it's a goddamn podcast. Crunchyroll.com. <laughs> they are our sponsor <laughs> this week. Uh, we really do appreciate them uh, coming on board. There's a, there's a few sponsors that, that I frankly haven't cared for. Every now and then there's a sponsor, and I'm just like, I don't like those guys. But if the money's there, we don't care. However, when Crunchyroll comes along... Yeah, we're proud. 
Because I, I'm literally proud of our sponsor, Crunchyroll, because they have a very legitimate product. It's professionally, uh, it's professionally done. It's prof professionally maintained. Lots of other people uh, who are respectable work with Crunchyroll, and um, and I like working with them. So I'd appreciate it if you guys went over to Crunchyroll.com/pka, got yourself this free month of this thing, and uh, try it on for size. Because we are definitely going to do this. When are we going to do this viewing party where we watch Naruto Shippuden, the tale of General, General Sal's chicken, or something <laughs> like that, or we'll watch the soy sauce one, or whichever one you'd like. I, I don't care. Um, I will watch anything. Um, but but I want to do a thing where we get the stream together, get a few hundred uh, PKA fans, and the, and they get to watch us, and and maybe they'll get uh, interested in uh, in anime as well. Because I'm interested in it. There's a whole group of people who love this thing. I enjoy Hinta, so. You know, there's <laughs> I feel be like I'm there. missing out on some anime thing. That's what it is to me. Like, it, yeah, exactly. Like, like, so, um, we went to Thanksgiving with the family, you know, like our f for our family friends, and both their kids are really into anime. And and I mentioned that we were working with Crunchyroll, and they were like, "Ah, oh, Crunchyroll is the best." And and then they just started like passionately i don't want to say arguing because that makes it sound unfun they were like you know laughing and debating. joking and and what debating is that what you said i thought maybe they were debating which was better like like between two series yeah but it was like you know like they were rehashing awesome moments from anime saying no 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 you should do this one and there's one i'm totally gonna screw up the name of it but people will know it's like boo 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 that's what it's called and uh, apparently it is a um, it's an alternate universe where martial arts dominates but all martial arts is performed just through hair so so they have like karate hair and they fight each other and it's goofy and it's funny and the two of them were just like yeah yeah that one no 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 not that one and and they had gotten a big kick out of anime and I have, it's like this whole thing that I'm missing out. Like, 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 uh, imagine, imagine you right now have never seen Game of Thrones. And it's like, oh, dude, there's this whole world out there that you still have in front of you. You've been missing it all these years. And, and I almost envy you because you're not waiting for next season like I am. You have it there backlog for you. I kind of feel like there's this anime parallel out there that there is like, hundred hours hundreds of hours out there that I haven't even begun to explore yet and it can't be that bad because so many people dig it yeah exactly. exactly I think I just get like I am sure it's cool and like I liked Pokemon when I was little like, I'm sure I wouldn't yeah. like it as much now but it's like I think what you said henti hentai like that stuff sure. for the longest time I thought that's just what anime was <laughs> like I thought all this anime stuff and like who is watching all of this filth this is like whole series of filth <laughs> yeah like, and then, like, I guess a couple of years ago, I'm like, oh, it's, so it's like just like Pokemon, I guess. Or it's something different. I don't know. There's probably an anime person out there who's like, oh, Pokemon's like the layman's anime. You got to be into uh, Kikoman Remastered. Were you really <laughs> 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 Remastered. Is that low sodium? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reimagined. <laughs> Wait, what, the, what was the name of your, of your uh, thing? Pokemon uh, Remastered. Pokemon so, or Kikamon Remastered Edition. You have to get yeah. the remastered one. That's soy sauce, by the way, for the uninitiate. Ah, uh, is that what Oh, Kikamon! Is... Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. The brand I of soy sauce. Of Japanese words. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, I, think it's gonna be good. I need the game with you. I think it'll be good. We'll uh, we'll sit down and watch some anime with the stream. And even if it's bad, I, I, think, I think it'll be a more fun stream if if the anime is bad, quite frankly, like if we're if we're ragging on the anime a little bit and having a good time with that, I think it'd be an entertaining stream. But that's not what I'm going for. I'm hoping that we find something we genuinely enjoy, and uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Hey, what was that movie that we watched with Chiz? That uh, oh, predestination. With... Yeah, if that's not is super close to that predestination. Predestination with Ethan Hawke. Um, I thought it was good. Mind. I saw Interstellar. Oh, how was that? I actually want to see it. Do I need? Did I change topics too soon? I... No, nah, go ahead. So we watched this movie called Predestination with Ethan Hawke. That's uh, about time travel. It's a bit hard to wrap your head around, but once you do, it's it's a very interesting concept. I think it's worth a watch, though. I, I, I it's not. It's definitely. It's one thumb up, not uh, not two. But uh, but I but I liked it. Yeah, I agree with that uh, review. Uh, Interstellar, I give two thumbs up. Um, I saw it at a regular theater. I can sort of imagine why it was so epic in IMAX. Like there were moments when like the speakers were booming and the screen was like shaking and it was coming at me and i was thinking to myself i bet in imax this is even better <laughs> you know what did you 
Did you like the part? My favorite part is when um, they're spoilers, trying to... I think, coming... No, I, I don't think this Our is too much of a spoiler. Down. They have to dock their spaceship with that mm -hmm. space station type thing, mm -hmm. and it's spinning at 67 RPMs. And the I'm probably going to get this a little bit wrong, but the robot tells him, he, he, he's like, he's like match, match rotation. He's like, sir, that's impossible. It's not it's not possible. It's necessary. <laughs> and they start. And so Matthew McConaughey is spinning this ship. It's 67 RPM, and he's just like, ah, like, like <laughs> until him and the spaceship are matched in the rotation. And then he's got to dock them. And he like looks over at the robot, and he's like, if I black out, you gotta take over. <laughs> it's just, it's I didn't care about that part. Moments. I didn't care. Is it a Lincoln part. that he's driving? A Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> There were other parts I liked a lot more, and uh, I feel like if I were to share them with everyone, but like Kyle's like, he said he cried several times in the movie, and uh, there were parts in the movie where I was crying, and, and I was thinking to myself, I bet this is one of Kyle's parts. <laughs> you know, like, oh my god. So I do our... Are... Hang on, hang on. I think we can, <laughs> I think if I say it this way, it's, it's non spoiler -ish. Okay. Was it the part where he was checking his mail? His video messages? Ah, uh, it... When he's checking his that video messages, that part was very <laughs> sad. He go, he's like, he's, it's like this. He goes, ha, ah, and the tears are pouring, and I was just like, oh god, <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, was th that so was really bad. sad. It's I, I was fucking crying bad. No, yeah. I, I want to say there was um, it's um, Matt Damon's turn, I guess. If if there's a better. A way to phrase it than that without uh, spoiling it that yeah. impacted me greatly. I was like, Wh what, what? <laughs> 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 and uh, anyway, so Interstellar was very good. I would check it out. Hunger Games just came out. I think I'd still go see Interstellar. Um, I'm gonna see yeah, Hunger I Games too because I I read the book as in I listened to the audiobook and uh, um, so I Hunger Games three. See it. It's it's yeah. the fourth it's the third of four movies. It's part one of a two part hmm. third uh, finale. Uh, to That's the right. I still haven't it's, seen it's the second the one. First half of the third book. It's on Netflix. So oh, yeah, the second good? one's on Netflix. Is it worth watching? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's as good is as the Peter first one. Is Peta a to big be? part of it? I just hate that guy. I hate nah. Peter. Um. I hate Katniss. Is... My daughter and I have been in this thing. So my daughter is very like. See, this would get her in trouble if I were to say this, but she's a little social justice worry. Oh, yeah, is she in her liberal phase? She is, and oh. um, uh, she was a tends to side with um, with women a lot. You know, she sided with um, is Michael Brown the Ferguson guy? Is that his name? He is. Yeah, she just absolutely sided with like that guy was on his knees, hands locked behind his head, Begging for had done nothing. <laughs> he, he was you know complying with the cop, and then for no reason the cop just shot him in the back of the head 17 times unloaded his gun and you know the police are just out there unprovoked executing people and i'm like hope that well, that's just... part of being a teenager it is it is yeah. and, and but to me I, I tend to look at motives and see like does this smell right like you know certainly there are douchebags out there who do terrible things unprovoked but most of the time I look at motivations and that usually drives behavior and that just didn't seem like a fit. Like there must be more angles to it than that. But she's young and sees one angle. Um, back to the Katniss thing. <sighs> that two-timing whore just can't seem to like <laughs> treat any guy respectfully, right? She She's dating, um, I forget, the taller guy played in the films. Um, do you know his name? Be at the very beginning before. I, I, I don't know. No, okay. And then she's thrust into the situation <laughs> with PETA where they're almost pretending to like each other because that makes them more um, favored by the crowds and it makes them more likely to get like burn ointments and whatever, winter clothes or things that are supposed to drop from the sky, which they made to be a really significant part of the game, but, but pretty much wasn't. You know, chicken soup, like really? That's fucking made a difference. So uh, um, anyway, but now... She's fallen in love with PETA. And then she comes back and she's not in love with PETA anymore. She's in love with guy A. But meanwhile, she's been like hooking up with PETA all the time. And and now the, the start in the second book, she's sleeping with PETA. And by sleeping with him, I mean sleeping. Like she's not having sex with him. Spoilers! <laughs> 
I, I don't think <laughs> it, this is the movie that's already out. But but yeah, she's like sharing a bed with Peta all the time, using him as some sort of like cuddly teddy bear while oh, she's with the friend first guy. Zoned. Friend body zone pillow. so hard. Yeah, if you're body pillowing a guy, you are leading him on hardcore. No wonder he's still digging you. You're fucking in bed with him, not doing anything. We're talking about Hunger Games. And, and she goes back to guy A, and then she flips over to Peter, and she goes back and forth between these two men through all three books, and I can hardly overlook that. You know, yeah, she does a lot of good things, saves the world, bullshit, bullshit. But as a girlfriend, she is shit. She is a two-time whore. I did whore. not know that. Yeah. I thought she was like the good character in this show. I want to rub dog shit in the face of whoever thought that having PETA laying on the ground painted with the like disguise <laughs> cake makeup or whatever the hell thought that was a good idea. That was the worst. That's the worst scene in any movie I've ever seen. Nothing has pulled me out of a moment as bad as that goddamn cake mix in his face. And then he wakes up. Oh, oh, I just happened in my weakness to be able to perform this, you know, great sculpture on my face, perfectly blending me to the rock. It's like, even so, if you did do that, Peter, it's not impressive. You're a little fruitcake. <laughs> yeah, but, like, like, I like it's that It's so part. ridiculous anyway. Like, like yeah. if, we were hiding, if we were hiding in my backyard, then yeah, man, we got like 10,000 square feet to hide in here. We got to really go all out. But no, you got this giant, like, geodome of, like, of, like goodness. Yeah. Like, just go lay under a tree and put some leaves on top of you. Like, exactly. What's like, going to happen when, when the bad guys face. start walking up? The bad guys are going to walk up. Katniss shakes him. We got to go. No, I used all my paint for this spot. I can't leave. <laughs> I won't look right anywhere else in the forest. God <laughs> damn it. Katniss, I'm all out of arts and crafts. We're yeah. done here. I didn't even think about it. You guys are totally right. No more yeah. If you're what in the woods, he, you can just... Look, like, that guy... All these that spots guy's such good. a pansy that that the <laughs> writers him. of the book I don't know if it's the writers of the book or the writers of the screenplay of the movie couldn't even come up for a good way for him to show his strength. They were yeah. like, "Let's show him how strong you are." I've seen you put big bags of flour over your shoulder. There is not a person in this call who can't take two big bags <laughs> of flour and put them on their fucking shoulders. A hundred pounds for a grown man ain't shit. If you can't throw five of those things on your shoulder, then you got nothing to to improve to show these like professional killers in here like a real strong guy can pick up something that weighs 250 pounds put it on his shoulder and, and start walking around that's what a strong guy can do the kind who would throw that weight in, in, a, in an impressive way but if you're just working yeah, in a just bakery him doing that. yeah it's like wow he could carry the mulch from the back of the pickup to where we're using it around our plants like, yeah. that's <laughs> how much strength he demonstrated I, I, I'm, I don't think I'm all that strong right now, and I grabbed two 80-pound concrete things at Home Depot the other day, and I was like, oh, these are fucking heavy. But I wasn't, like, crawling or anything, and, and this guy grabbed that little... Nah. The, the, the and first if you were guy, entering, like, a killing dome, would you think that your two 80-pound bags would be your go-to? Like, hey, I got this. You're an archer. Yeah. I got two bags <laughs> at once. Like, yeah. You want to be on my team? Want to team up? Go to the cornucopia, <laughs> grab some shit? I also have I, cake decorating I, skills. Yeah, <laughs> I really like the Hunger Games. Don't get me wrong, but you know it's it, it's it's supposed to be a fantastical world. You're not supposed to pick it apart, but if you stop and start picking it apart, it's like, well, come on now, like these the districts who have made it their business to instead of allowing them their their citizens to be chosen randomly, they say no. Big Jim's the guy who we who, who we should mm -hmm. send into the, the fucking fight. Let's train Big Jim for his entire life and make him a badass. Like, yeah, I like Shockingly, that. They win a lot, and they should win a lot. But uh -huh. I don't think they're impressive enough. Cause it. Let's just compare districts to like regions of the country, because that's in reality what they are. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can say. You know, how many districts are there? Like, Thirteen, I think. Oh, okay, that's perfect. Like, break the U.S. into 13 portions. That's what they've actually done there. And it would make sense. if you broke, There are 13 relevant sections you could break the U.S. into, I'm sure. There's mm -hmm. certain, you know, there's the, the Midwest with the farming and the, the agriculture and, and mining and such. Anyway, if you pick the baddest motherfucker from the SEC in football, think about what that would look like. Now, that's just for college football. Now, yeah. But, but we're, now take it up 10 fucking levels where he's going to, we're, we're, we're training someone to fight to the death Mm -hmm. For the pride and honor of our entire, uh, you know, region here, and it happens but once a year, right? Is it once a year? Uh, yep. It, the person you would send would not look like those skinny motherfucker and like white boy, white jocks that look like they could be the captain of your football team. 
Nah, that's not the guy they send. They send a guy that looks like Brock Lesnar, who's got a scar across the like, under his 18, face. I think. They're kids they were sending. There are some but scary 18 year olds. There are. That you could there are. Yeah, and there's definitely better people than Katniss and. Uh, well, they've got Katniss and the girl. Is the yeah. best. That's She's what brave makes and a role model for women. But yeah, there were literally like you know young children in there like uh, i forget oh yeah that little name. black girl who died i didn't I, I like was gonna, that. i was gonna say that but i was afraid that somehow that was like a not polite description but like, was her name rose i forget her name and it was a name I that doesn't know. exist in normal language i think but uh, <laughs> no. yeah like just like she didn't make isn't it. a name i like the child <laughs> death i felt like there should have been much more child death and mm -hmm. i felt the child death should have been much more graphic and gory Mm -hmm. um, I'd, like, I'd like there to be some explosions where the children's body parts go everywhere. And I'm not saying that because I'm sick of twists and trying to be shocking. I just think that if you're going to keep me within my realm of, of uh, disbelief, then it has to be pretty rough. Um, what's the, uh, I absolutely Japanese... agree. Then the, the big burly guy can grab like the arm of the little girl and use it like a cudgel on the face of that well, other chick. No, it'd be I, a better movie. It, it doesn't, they don't have to be barbarians, but I would like it if, if these guys were like gladiators, because that's in reality what they are. Like, like, mm -hmm. make, it like, make them like gladiators. They should be professional fighters. Les Stroud right. gladiators, right? They, they, they need to be gladiators slash survival champions. You know? The best they, of us, yeah. Yeah, that's... I but, love the idea of, of anything that, that, like... That's why I like the space program so much. Like, astronauts are really talented motherfuckers, and they're driven. It's not like they just went out and found the smartest guy who was also in the Air Force. It took a... It, it's not just that. They found this, this, this genius who went to the Air Force and studied mathematics, and, and, and then he, he put his time into the Air Force so he could be a pilot, and, he, and his, his whole life's about being an astronaut, like... A guy like it's that. Like, is this like, is the guy that got most likely to succeed at your high school for twenty years in a row, right? Like yeah, that, that's what it yeah. took to be an astronaut. Every step of the way, he kicked everybody else's ass. He 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 had to go to flight training. Well, he's the best at flight training. He had to go to zero G, zero G training. He's the best at that. Underwater, he's the best at it. Some mm -hmm. you, you test him academically, he's off the fucking scales. He went to this school and that school, and then he went to this military institute. Oh, and then he flew in this war, too, so he's got actual flight experience. That's the kind of people we send to space. And, like, I feel, I, I wish there were more things that, like, made the real, like, you know, the cream rise to the yeah. top, that, that we picked out the best of us. I wish there were it more than just special the ops. Of us. Special ops, right? I feel like Navy yeah. SEALs and Delta nah. Force. You know, yeah. no, you say. Here's I remember being a little kid and thinking, like, the biggest, you know, hurdle to get over when becoming an astronaut was, like, now you can't be too scared up in space. Like, <laughs> like when you're a little kid and it's like, I don't know if I could do it. I might get too scared. But, like, I'm not. Dude, it's, I like uh, it's, uh, little kid fears. Like, like okay, I thought that um, that quicksand was going to play a much larger role in my life than yeah. it really did. Like, I really needed a quicksand <laughs> preparedness plan, you know, because all the cartoons I saw, like, that was going to be a common thing. Um, oh, I had a bunch of these in my... This is a conversation I was having with myself the other day. Um, uh, I don't know. I lost them all, but yeah. The, um, oh, fuck. All right, but it is uh, 10 o'clock, and I have got to be, be dipping out, y'all. Okay. All right. All right. Fun Later times. Everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Bye bye. Is that one of those Mexican? Did he have one of them, one of those Mexican blanket shirts? I didn't notice it till the end. I think maybe he did. I don't know. <laughs> now I'm curious. But yeah, I wish that there were more need for the best of us, and there just isn't. There's a lot of need for someone who's pretty good. Like <laughs> like that happens a lot. Like lots of people need someone who's pretty good at something. They're mildly driven and pretty competent at it like if you get someone who's those things like that's a skilled worker but it's rare that you're like oh no he's been training for that since since he was eight years old he's he's so much better than the person who's second best at it that they really don't even count that person he just all he does is this all he all he cares about is this he doesn't have a family like that might be why people like sports uh, I feel like when I watch UFC or football or whatever, like this pro level sport, it's like, yeah, this guy's been driven to achieve this job and be great at this job since he was four. You I know, want to it, see someone who's the best. I, I think that I, exists, I, I, man. I think that's a really big American thing as well. Like, like everybody, I, I always want to see who's the best. That's all I care about. Like, I don't care about who's 
you know, we'll, we'll be looking at somebody and be like, oh, so he's like the fifth best at that. I want to see the best at it, and, and I want to know how much better he is than the second best. And if it's significant, that means a lot to me, and that happens a lot in more I, obscure sports. I think a things. lot of times, you know, this whole concept of best, whether it be fighting, soccer, basketball, football, or, or what, it's any given Sunday, and I think that's neat too, you know, like... Like this, this concept cases, of who's the best is very fluid. And and you're like, mm-hmm. I, one guy's head and shoulders way above the other guys. Even Tiger Woods, when he was dominating like no one's dominated before, didn't win them all. He won like a quarter of the time, which was great, but not. I, I think there was one year there where he really, he won, he won like two majors and he won like three or four more championships. He really put it on, put it on crazy one year. And some sports that, you know, those are our greatest champions. Those are the names that you remember for you know that that are still there. Mm-hmm. Those are the guys who are head and shoulders. Lance Armstrong was. Say what you want about Lance Armstrong, like if you give the those Tour de France's to the the next clean w- racer down the line, it's like number one hundred and twenty two. <laughs> yeah, like, I heard it was like, like in the thirties like, or something or twenty three or yeah, and, and then you like don't that. know if that top clean racer was actually better than Lance Armstrong. Maybe Lance Armstrong could have pulled twenty second without the drugs. Lance Armstrong's one of those guys. He was so much better than the second place guy, who was also using similar tactics. Like mm-hmm. they, it was kind of free reign. Everybody was was blood doping. Everybody was um, was in, trying to increase the amount of red blood cells and <clears throat> the effectiveness of those red blood cells and a number of other things. But and he also trained his fucking ass off and made it his life's goal to pedal a bike. Like mm-hmm. that guy was a champion who was he- head and shoulders. I think I think Muhammad Ali was there too. And mm-hmm. there's a few few guys who are like that, and I just I, I like looking at guys like that who are who are just heroes at something, and it doesn't have to be sports. I'd like to see an astronaut or somebody like like someone do something heroic and, and great with their mind and their body and and push the limits. <clears throat> we used to have all those. I mean, like older generations, it seemed like had those like. You're going, I can't get out of, I'd like to see someone do something great with their mind and their body and really push the limits. And I'm thinking. Are we talking about porn now? <laughs> no, I'm talking <laughs> okay. about. I don't know. I'm talking about uh, like an Apollo 13 situation, where it's, where where you know someone is put in a situation of adversity, and and we get to watch them overcome it. I want that. I want On to a see it all live streamed. Scale. I want someone yeah. to go to Mars in a two year flight that has to like work their body and do something to make sure that it's successful, and it's a live stream we can tune into on a daily basis anytime we want. I want Europa so bad. I would. I, I. 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 There's no reason not to spend money on going to to Europa. It's one of it's one of um, Jupiter's moons, I believe. Hmm. I hope it is. It could be Saturn's, but I'm pretty sure it's one of Jupiter's moons. And and from what I I understand, it's had a liquid ocean under that ice cap that has existed for billions of years. There's been liquid water there that's warm for billions of years. Like for all we know, there's people down there. There could easily be people down there. There could be intelligent fish things that live down there in underwater cities, for all we know. Like, there's no reason we shouldn't fly out there and drill to the bottom of that thing and How send a submersible you... down. I wonder what the gravity's like. <clears throat> Europa, huh? EU. I figured. Right here on Wikipedia, Europa the moon... It is a Jupiter moon. It's the sixth closest moon to Jupiter. It's slightly smaller than the moon. Yeah. So there's going to be low gravity there. Um, <clears throat> it's 1,900 miles in diameter. They detected clay-like materials, often associated with organic material, on the icy crust. Um, water vapor plumes were detected on Euro- Europa, similar to water vapor plumes on ooh, Encladius, a moon of Saturn. That means nothing to me. So the way it works is it it's it's an icy shell on the outside, and then it's a liquid um, it's a, a liquid ocean, and then they think there's a core composed of some heavier metal. And uh, because of its the the gravity, uh, the way gravity is affecting uh, that ocean, the ocean is like 
uh, moving back and forth and creating friction around the core and keeping the water warm and keeping the ocean circulated, uh, the gravity from uh, Jupiter. It does seem like there could be life here. There's a movie called, Euro the I think it's Europa Report. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix. It's about a mission that goes there. I'd say it's another one of those one thumbs up movies, but um, it's it's good. It's it, it's a good space movie. It's not a great space movie, but it's not a bad space movie. And they go to Europa, they land, and they. I I like that we're going to Mars, but I'm kind of with you on the Europa thing. Like you know what? But we know Mars is garbage, right? It's just a big old ball of red rock and dust, and it, it's it's a rusted out rock of a planet, and there's no life there, and there's no hint that there ever was life there, and it's it's another moon, you know? Cool there that we went there. Water. What's that? There was liquid water there, and there's still ice there. Uh, are we sure about that? Positive, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. There's, river, there's evidence of rivers and tributaries and lakes and all that stuff on the surface, and it, it does have icy caps. Um, and they're drilling. I think the whole point of that rover that's on there now, which is quite big, by the way. I, mm. thought, I used to think of the rover as being something three feet long, but it looks like something I could ride on now, like a, more like an ATV size. Uh, but I think they're drilling at the base of some mountain soon to like look for organics. But yeah, I agree with you. I think the Europa thing could promise, you know, we find out if life, uh, if if life is a thing that's unique to Earth or not. And I think that's a big question. I'd love to know that answer. And I think I'm gonna know that answer before I die. Kyle's right, though. If anyone's curious, there's definitely ice on Mars, according to Wikipedia. What? It's right here on the internet. But I just feel like it wouldn't cost that much to do that Europa thing, like. How much more than the Mars missions could it cost? That's I don't know. I don't, I don't think it'd be that much. I mean, they sent this the uh, space the, that they've sent probes to it before, so they can they need to land it. and drill though. Yeah, yeah, they need to land and drill. I, I and wonder what, what the atmosphere is like. Can you get more solar once you're there? I don't know. I think so because they you can they get they got a it doesn't look like it's a. It doesn't look like it has an atmosphere. I don't know if it does or not, but it doesn't look like there's any cloud cover from the pictures I've seen. But I want him to investigate that thing. I want to know more about it. I've heard Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about it before, and he's pretty eloquent about it. He's like, I want him to land and drill, and then I want him to lower a little camera down there and send it swimming around, see what we find down there. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I want to do that too. <laughs> it could totally be like fish-like things swimming up to the camera. It could happen. Yeah. Kyle. Uh, AMA question. Uh, I was wondering what the best bolt action rifle to get in 300 Win Mag. And the next, he's going to ask about the best 12 gauge shotgun, and he wants you to be budget oriented. Okay, 12 gauge shotgun. Um, if you're going on the cheap end, uh, like like as the price is, the price goes up as we go. But uh, I like the Remington 870 or mm -hmm. the Mossberg. Uh, 500, 500 or 590, yeah. 590, yeah, whichever way you want to go. I prefer the Remington just because I like where the the safety is. It's 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 by the trigger guard and the uh, the this, the release. If you want to eject the shell without firing, is forward of that trigger guard, rather than the the Mossberg situation where the release is behind the trigger guard and the safety is a thumb latch up on the uh, the back of the weapon. I don't I don't care for that. It's just not what I'm used to. Um, so I like the 870. You can get them for a couple hundred dollars used. Um, like three or four hundred dollars new, uh, if you if you don't mind having the cheap one, you can get the really nice nickel marine version like Woody has. I think they're like five hundred. Uh, that's a good guess. I want to say mine threatened six when it was all shipped and FFL yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So you know they peak out at six hundred, but um, and then from there it just depends. If if you the Rem I've got a lot of experience with Remingtons. Um, I've shot a few Berettas, but I just didn't see anything special about them. I love Benelli's, though. So I, I would I would go up the ladder like this. I'd go Remington 870, Remington 1100, maybe a Remington 1187. But once you've spent the money on the 1187, you could easily have gone with like a Benelli Montefeltro. Um, I like the, that gun a lot. I've got one. Um, I've got the... Um, the Benelli M2, the Benelli Super 90, Super 90 the, the, the Super Sport... Um, I like Benelli's. I like their. Um, I like everything about them. Uh, they shoot. They shoot really fast. Um, and when I shoot like clays and when I shoot birds, I want like a really quick like uh, follow up shot. 
and I and the Minellis have the whole recoil mitigation system, and they've got special stocks that also do the same. So I like Benelli's. Um So I do something like that with the bolt action rifle. Um, I don't have a too too much experience with 300 Win Mag. I, everything I've got is 338 Lapua. Um, if I had it my way, it wouldn't be. But I've got a 338 Lapua AR-15. I've got a 338 Lapua um, Desert Tactical SRS, and I've got um, another one that's not coming to mind right now. But I don't have a lot of 300 Win Mag stuff. But I like the Remington rifles. Uh, so maybe a Remington 700 if if those come chamber chamber to that. I don't even know if they do. I feel like the Remington 700 is just, it's kind of like the Honda Civic of bolt-action rifles. Uh, there's tons and you, tons of things. You like that cartridge, the 300 Win Mag? Yes, it's preferable to the 338. I, I don't, I think it, it, it has some pluses and minuses, but the thing that really puts me in the 300 Win Mag column is just the cost. Um, the, it got a lot of military contracts, so the price for 300 Win Mag is substantially less than that of 338 Lapua ammunition. 338 Lapua ammunition is like five or six bucks a shot. You know, you buy a box of 20 rounds and it's like 90 to 110, 120 dollars, something like that. And that's that's too much. You know, you got two boxes of bullets. You can carry them in one hand like it's nothing. But it's 200 dollars, and, and that's just absurd. My my AR has a 10 round magazine of that ammunition, so it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 dollars every time you pull the trigger. And I don't like that. So 300 Win Mag is more cost efficient, cheaper to shoot. Uh, and it hangs right in there in the ballistics column from what I understand. I just don't have a lot of experience with it. But if I'm picking a, any bolt-action rifle, I'd get, a, I'd get a Remington 700 because you could do so much with it when you're starting off with a Remington 700 action. You can get yourself a special fancy fluted barrel. You can have it coated in any number of ridiculous things, and this thing makes it as hard as diamonds, and this thing makes it <laughs> never rust, and this thing makes it so that you never have to lubricate it. And then this nickel, boron, and titanium, this, and... And at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want to it, and it'll look however you want. That Remington 700 that out of the box is the most accurate out-of-the-box bolt-action rifle in the world. You can tweak a little bit, and it'll become one of the most accurate rifles in the world, period, you know, up until a certain distance, depending on your cartridge. And since you're going with 300 Win Mag, that's going out there like 13 or 1,400 yards, I think. So Remington 700, and then have fun with it, because you can do anything you want from there. You can put it in a chassis, change the barrel, change... Every little component of it, as you know. How's your um, range coming along? You bought a bunch of steel targets a little while back. Ah, yeah. Um, I, uh, I didn't buy them. I got, I got sent a bunch of free uh, steel targets. And I, I put them up. They're looking good. I talked to that guy today, though, um, on Facebook, actually. And um, he was I, I was explaining to him like what we were going to do for him as far as um, like when I made a video, I was going to mention, like, oh, these targets came from... Um, Blah blah blah. These are these kind of targets. And, you know, I, I was like, yeah, we'll get you the verbal mention. I'll link your product description. That way, people know that we're shooting your stuff. And, um, and he's like, well, I'd like my own video. And we're trying to work out how we could do that for him because he couldn't afford it really. And um, and so we can't. And I was like, well, what if you just? I was like, I'd like some more targets. I was like, you sent me a good many to begin with. You sent me these eight or nine poppers, and you sent me this this speed rack, and you sent me this silhouette rack. And, and that's all good and everything, but I need like three or four times that because I want a big range. I want a range that's impressive to even look at. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I want extra targets off in the distance that are big targets. I'm like, oh, yeah, you want to shoot 100? That's 100, and that's 200, and that's three. You know, I'd like, I need a lot of targets. He's like, oh, well, make a list. So, oh. so I'm going to make myself a, a shopping list, you know, and I, I, you always said that you've mentioned that thing that Heather would say to to intrigue sponsors or potential sponsors. And you're like, I can't eat headphones. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like like gear is nice, but I can't eat headphones. But this is definitely a situation where it's a very symbiotic relationship in that I I don't know why I never did get around to making my own permanent range. The the nature of those videos is sometimes it's like it's it's like a like a flash mob type thing. Like there's been situations where like, well, we're here. Get out. Let's go. All right. You <laughs> grab that. You grab that. I got this. La! All right. There we go. Ten million views. You know, some views. My some videos are like that, but um, for something like this, it's just different. So it's nice. I, I and and um, I know. Yeah, I know you're uh, friends with Hickok Forty Five. I just like his videos. I just like his I videos. Would. It sounded like I said dislike, but <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'd say we're friends. I've met him. Um, 
You get I'm, along I'm friendly, with him. I, yeah, I, I'm friendly with him. Uh, I get along with him. There's certainly no bla- bad blood, and we've we've always like like I uh, I've met him probably four or five times, and uh, we always have a little quick laugh and then part. But I'm not friends with him or anything. Seems like a nice guy, and I genuinely like the way he kind of does business on YouTube. Like when he first met me, I think he was concerned. I think a lot of my fans have been going to him, being like, "Effius Rush is better than you," because of blah blah blah, and 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 I'm sure he. Maybe and I think maybe he had thought that maybe I was driving that a little bit. And so when he met me, he's like, I just want to be clear. I don't want any kind of like a competition or a shoot off or anything like that. And I'm like, I completely agree. Nobody wins from that. If you beat me, then you look bad, and I don't even look that great. And if 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 if, if um, you know, you said that no matter who, yeah. no matter who, yeah, I said it backwards. But what I, what I what I was getting at was that no one wins from us having some kind of stupid competition. Um, but you know, just make yeah, clear that we're but we're friendly I, and that's, part of that's what I like about his videos is he has a a gun range there and he does more gun review stuff than FPS. Like FPS Russia does gun reviews and you learn about it, but he does like a thirty minute sort of talk around and shoot. Mm-hmm. And, um, the fact that he has like a stable course is part of what I like in his videos. Like you know, the, I know he did this with the gong with that gun and that with the gong with that gun and you know how he feels about these different things and uh uh there's the consistency in his course there's some value in that to me yeah now you'll have a a a range that uh that you can always rely on to be there yeah that's the goal uh i'm gonna build a i'm I'm still i'm still building i'm still putting it together i've got my heart hanging but uh it sounds like i've got some more coming now so i guess i'll be continuing on with it uh, yeah. I'm building a lot of stuff. Tomorrow's it's been a busy week, and it's it's going to continue in that way. I got my buggy running. I, th- I already mentioned that a few times, though. I, um, I was we had. <laughs> I've talked to you a little bit about it. I um, I'd like a range on my land, and uh, at 14 acres, it's not the same as a hundred. Like, I feel like when you're at your father's ranch, I guess I'll call it, you can shoot in the air, and it'll land on your dad's property somewhere, right? Um. If, if you shoot high enough, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try not to shoot in the air. Um, you know, and if I do, I try to shoot really straight up because, you know, it loses Things all the energy. Things go far, yeah. But all you right. know, the the more degrees down, like if you shot like at that angle, no, it's gonna keep going and land in the next town somewhere. Bullets go long miles. See, they're, they're, I didn't know that. I I don't know how far they go. That's not a thing normal people know. Um, but anyway, your father has so much land. I like okay let's forget about the air thing if you miss your target there's like a lot of woods surrounding yeah, that matter. target right you know like it, you really want a proper backstop but if you were to say somehow miss the backstop and hit the woods there's a lot of woods you know yeah like, i shoot those woods yeah it, it, it's it, gun people say woods on a proper backstop but it, enough woods is <laughs> you know when it goes it's far, a lot of woods it's a lot so um but i don't have that you know, and, and to me, like I draw this thing, like okay, if it's a backstop, would you be comfortable with someone putting up a range on the other side, you know, and using it in that in in the direction toward me? And ideas that I thought were fine <laughs> when I was shooting out seem like whoa, whoa, whoa! You mean switch it around? Suddenly, the the five foot tall backstop I had in my head is no good. You know, I I, I want a little more room for error there, and uh, I don't know, maybe it needs to be buried somewhat and have a big you know maybe if it was a i'll make up numbers right if it was a 10 foot hole and an eight foot backstop now we've got 18 feet now we're talking about something that that gets us somewhere i don't know but i'd like to have a place i felt comfortable shooting i'd like to teach colin to shoot get him a cricket yeah those are cool it'd be perfect they're really accurate too and and then i'd like to have a pond that that's a thing that I think would be kind of neat if there was like a little pond, tiny. I guess you can't call it a lake; it'd be a pond. And uh, but then I realized, like, huh, you know, my plans for making a pond and my plans for making a shooting range, which are pretty much dig a hole, are identical. <laughs> which one will I get in in each situation? I'm... I know the answer. You could do both. You could use your dam. The dam that you build for the pond could be your backstop. That's a neat idea. I'll have to take some some planning on that. Yeah, it, it, I'll, the way my dad's pond is built, it's it's sort of built like that. It, now his has washed away uh, probably three or four times over the last twenty years, so like it's 
it may not have been the best idea, mm-hmm. but <laughs> um, it's there. And it actually, it, the last time they repaired it, they did a pretty good job. But it's that that pond used to be stocked with thousands of big catfish and stuff, and the the whole dam washed away one night, and uh, we lost them all. Where did the water go? Um, so there's a creek. It feeds into sort of a a, a bowl. Uh-huh. And um, and the dam and then there's a dam, uh, obviously holding it all in place. And there is a spout on one side of the dam where the water goes down a pipe under the dam and then out into a creek on the other side that flows away. Well, the water washed, you know, logs or something flowed. They got on top of the spout. Didn't allow the pond to drain. The water level rose, rose and rose until it went over the dam. And then the water washing over the dam degraded the dam and washed bits of it away and eroded it down until. It was just kind of like it cut a hole down through it, like right there in the middle, and the water just flowed straight through. The fish all washed out, and they went down in the creek. Hmm. Gone forever. So, but, huh. And I guess there were a lot of fish, and they just produced Thousands. themselves, right? No, we caught them and, and stocked the... We bought hundreds of them. We bought maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000. They came in big tanks. Hmm. Um, they, they were like this long when we bought them, but they'd been in there for like six years. And then like there was a there was a pond where the guy was moving. He was leaving. He was selling his property, but he had a catfish pond that was full of big catfish, like like this big. And so we put fish baskets out there. Um, I'm I can make fish baskets out of um, wire, mm-hmm. and so I wove a bunch of fish baskets and uh, put them out there. And we caught all the fucking fish out of there, and we put them in our pond. And then our our neighbors who like to go out on the lake and fish, whenever they caught a big one, they would bring it and put it in our pond. And there was actually a 95-pound catfish in there at one point. Wow. That, uh, and there was a 60-pound one as well. And then lots of, like 20 pounds was right about average. Like they were huge. It was really fun. And, and we didn't, we would go out there and throw the fish food, the floating fish food, and the water would boil with the activity. Like you could see the whole, they just come up and just, like, like whales would come up and like, like get stuff like these catfish come up and just gobble this stuff up because it looks like dog food but but it floats huh. and we'd fish right there like we just we'd fish with the fish food out there and we're just like yanking them in all day just for fun. <laughs> but and then you throw them back. Yeah. You eat them. You throw them back. We we threw them back. I I tried to eat one once and it we, we ended up starving and ended up going to McDonald's. Uh, we got a piece of it fried by the time we were done, but we ate that little piece and then went to McDonald's. <laughs> Why so. was it so hard? Well, it's hard to skin a catfish. Yeah, I've heard. Um, it takes a special tool. I've seen it on YouTube. I didn't know that. Like, we had no experience. Mm-hmm. And we're, like, out. And Scott's like, well, I think you nail it to a board or something. And I'm like, why would you nail And it turns out, yeah, that's part of it. But we nailed it to the tree. And I'm, like, pulling the skin off. And it's, finally, it's I just... It's like a cross between um, channel lock. No, uh, vice grips. But it's, like, a big flat bill. You know, it's mm-hmm. a wide build vice grips. Then you grab the skin and you pull it down. And, and when I watch the people pull it down, of course, you can't feel it. It's a YouTube video. Mm-hmm. But you could see they were, like, using all their strength to pull the skin off. It was yeah, a big it's, deal. It's, 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 it's not like other fish. It's sort of a, a slimy, eel-like, smooth skin. It's not scales. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of gross. But we ended up getting a little piece, fried it, ate it. That was it. But anyway, <laughs> the back of a fish pond could perhaps be, be that. I don't know. I'm sure you'll be able to work out. Do, do you should be able to do pretty much. You could do both if you really wanted it. Yeah, and part of it, I, I feel like I need to spend more time there. You know, we visit, and almost all the times we go, we have to like run. You know, like all right, we're here. We've got 30 minutes. I bring a truckload of stuff from this house every time, like winter clothes, sports equipment, things I'm not actively using, and just like move things that that we don't use every day to the new house. And then by the time that's done, it's almost time to go. Or the sun setting, or maybe I have time, but Jackie doesn't, or vice versa. And, uh, you know, I keep telling Jackie, like, I want you to have, like, two hours where you're not busy. And we can just walk the lot, talk about where the shop would be, where a pond would be, things like that. So, yeah. that'll come. You could uh, you could do an indoor shooting range over there by your barn if you wanted to. You could, um, and you could always just bring in dirt, just dump, lo- dump trucks load of dirt and Put it where you want it. Shape it how you want it. Good, yeah. What was I going to say? Oh, a whole new topic. Tomorrow is Hope's last driving class. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, sometime like Monday or Tuesday next week. Uh, next week, I don't know when it'll be. She'll have her learning permit. and She'll be able to drive the roads. 
and that's well, uh, with a parent in the car though right 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 so the way it works is for an entire year she needs a parent in the car that's the deal and then she gets a i think it's called a provisional license or something like that it's the first level of driver's license where um she can drive one other friend or a member of the immediate family and that doesn't count against the friend so she could have like her best friend and colin in the car Mm -hmm. uh, she can't use her phone for anything but like calling 911 or her parents and uh and she can't drive at night and then six months after that it backs off a little bit i think she can have like more friends the phone thing exists until they're 18 mm. and uh i shocked we, we just talk, went over all this the other day but the core of it is she has a whole year where she can only drive on you know with a parent which like mm -hmm. for us is like well that gets me nothing <laughs> you know it wasn't wasn't the fact that i was in the driver's seat that was the problem it was the fact that yeah. i had the driver somewhere well but, now my drives are a little more scary <laughs> perfect perfect but um but she'll be driving herself to school which is kind of a neat thing i'll be in the passenger and she'll be driving me to her school and i'll drive home and uh and you know chuck she should be a pretty good driver a year from now yeah and uh that's a cool thing. She's like, can we make it so that my first drive isn't to school? Oh, we both share a completely terrible, like, sense of direction. I guess it's true. I do have a bad sense of direction. I, I, I like to think that it's not that I have a bad sense of direction. I'm just not paying attention like other people do. But no, if you took me and spun me around, I wouldn't know where the hell I was. I, I like it. And, I, and Hope makes fun of me, but she's just as bad. She's terrible. I, I We were headed to her school just recently. But mind you, she's a sophomore, right? We, this is a year and a half we've been going here. And, uh, and I'm like, is this the turn? Because I wasn't positive. And she's like, no. And she's like thinking less of me for not knowing that that wasn't the right turn. And then she <laughs> thought, wait a minute. I don't exactly know how we got this far. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's, her it's too. easy to get lost, though. Like, like, like I, we got a little bit turned around uh, uh, up in um, where the fuck we were that time and on the survival trip. Yeah, Georgia, North Carolina, and somewhere else, Tennessee, yeah, maybe. That, when it was just you and I um, uh, on that road. Remember, we stopped and asked that guy who was gardening, and oh and yeah, we were looking for. Oh, there was that like was the first trail. survival trip. We were near Uari. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was the purple trail and the yellow trail, and we couldn't right. remember where the fuck we were. It was tricky. Yeah. It, but I hope she doesn't know her way around. And that'll be interesting. But I think when she starts driving, it'll require her to pay attention in a way that passengers aren't required to. Mm -hmm. And she'll start learning her way around. But yeah. it, it's interesting. I've been... It, almost like the cable. Cable's going to come 30 to 90 days. And I got to get the timer started. I, I've been driving so hard to get this darn timer started. So that, um, you know, this is that... Like it happens 39 days. It hasn't even started yet. They need to bill me and they need to get these um, easements signed. And I got the easement signs, but I haven't got a bill. With Hope, she can't drive until she's had her learner's permit for a year. And it's like, I've just been pushing everyone. Like, dude, we got to get this permit going. We got to, got to, got to, you know, working with the driving school and such. And um, this week, the timer will start one year from a week from now. That's great. Yeah, I, got, I actually went and got my, um, it's kind of similar, I went and reapplied for my uh, carry permit, my concealed carry permit. Mine expired. Oh, you let so, it expire? Oh, but yeah. wait, that's not that big. Uh, in North Carolina, if you let it expire, it really sucks because you have to take Same the here. course again. Uh, no, you don't, like, you have to fill the paperwork again. Yeah. You're not sitting in, like, a 12-hour course and, nah. like, it's a, it's a much bigger deal here. Yeah, I I just had to I don't know it was like Written fifty test, bucks for one thing. No efficiency test. Yeah, that here. Yeah, that there was, was all, it's all there was part there of was it. a fingerprint test and the I had them all <laughs> had them all <laughs> nicely um, done, was, Kyle. Yeah, there was a uh, there was a sign your name and give us fifty dollars test. I passed <laughs> both of those with flying colors. <laughs> well done. Now there's the there's the uh, wait four to six weeks test and I'm currently involved in that. Mm. So yeah, mine. Mine, it's not going to expire soon. I just did it like a year ago. so. Yeah, I felt like I needed to get it. I was I, I noticed that my girlfriend didn't, uh, she doesn't have hers and she still had her gun. And I was like, you can't do that. You can't carry the gun in your purse if you don't have a thing. And she's like, well, I don't have my license here yet and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, let me make, let me just go ahead and fix this situation. Uh, and I had been putting it off anyway. I just kept uh, So you did the two of you at the same time. 
No, no, I just went and got mine so that I'd be legal. Like, like she's on her own. <laughs> what? Like, can I ask what she carries? To, like, it, I picture her carrying like a pink J frame. What does she carry? No, that's what I gave my uh, last girlfriend. Oh, okay. I gave Proper her a girl's gun. Yeah, like a like a pink uh, Smith and Wesson feather light or something. Yeah, perfect. Uh, with, con- with a concealed uh, hammer and everything. Um. I don't know what she fucking carries, actually, yeah. now I think about it. We'll have to find that out. Yeah, she's upstairs asleep. Not a good time. I could wake her up. <laughs> she's upstairs she sleeping. Really, is she, she really want to know. Is she staying over? Yeah. So has she moved in? No. Well, no I'm she, sorry, she she's sleeping over. over. That's a thing. She sleeps, she sleeps over frequently. How like, often? A um, couple days a week. Hmm. That's only a, a hop, skip, and a jump from her moving in. I that's that's not unusual behavior anyway. No, um, I'm not saying it's unusual behavior. I'm just asking if uh, if that's the next step. She has a toothbrush here. Um, mm-hmm. That's about it. You know, there's usually some of her belongings in the in the wash in one way or another. Like, like there's you know some shirts or underwear or something right. in the washing machine. But she doesn't live here, reside here in any way. But you know, she's been, she stays here for a couple days in a row. You know, we hang out and then take a few days off and then again. But right now, we, she's, she got here yesterday or the day before and, uh, you know, we did this Thanksgiving thing and, um, you know, she'll go back home tomorrow. Do you live much further from her work than she does? They're both. I don't know. Um, I don't know where she works. Oh, she doesn't, she, um, she quit her last job. She's, she's oh, got a she? monitor. Yeah, she started doing, um, she had this monogram business beforehand. She's got a monogram machine, and uh, mm-hmm. she wanted to switch back to doing that. Um, so she's doing that now. She's doing some. She's doing this monogram thing for herself. Uh, really, in, doing like an internet business thing and monogramming stuff. Um, so she's doing that. Uh, and um, we should pimp out the URL someday. I'm not sure if that would yeah. help her or hurt her. Get her DDoSed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the people that know Woody now know her. Here come the attacks. Yeah, it's probably no good. But uh, she. Um, where she lives is like, I'm going to say 30, 30 minutes from me, something like that. That's where she moved to, hmm. about half an hour away. So a monogram machine, is that just a really high-end sewing machine or is it different? I don't know. Huh. I'd like to ask her about it, but I'm not sure she'd answer me. <laughs> might be like she'd the... answer. <laughs> my, my dad got it. He's, he's like, you don't talk very much. She's like, I'm shy. <laughs> she is. She's shy at first. She's... Got to gotta wait till she opens up a little bit, get to know a little better, and she talks more, and she gets more interesting, and she gets funnier, too. She's got a pretty good sense of humor, and I, I have discovered, and uh, the Thanksgiving dinner was pretty good as well. So You had a fun day. Um, I always have a fun day. Like, like, it's like Chiz was saying earlier. He was talking about like my food. Like he, I was telling him about like mixing the chocolate and the peanut butter uh, cinnamon toast crunch. He's like, all of your foods always are like the best tasting things ever. And that's kind of how I do everything. Like, all right, if we're going to go do something, let's try to make it as good as it possibly can be. And I try to do that with everything in life. Like, every day I try to have as much fun as I possibly can while getting as many of my responsibilities uh, taken care of as the, at the same time. It's sort of a, a yin-yang of responsibility and wild fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You want to call that a show? I was thinking that, too. Okay. Uh, Painkiller already, episode 208. I think we're three and a half hours long, but I quite frankly don't even know. Maybe three, three. hours and 36 minutes, if I'm guessing. Wow. Could be Last wrong. time you were, you, you were perfect. Are you perfect this time? Do you know? No, nah, I don't remember when we started, to be honest. Hmm. Okay. All right. PKA 208. Check out Crunchyroll. Links in the description, etc. And, uh, Patreon. We're giving everyone a chance to win an Xbox, uh, who's, who's yeah. registered at the end of the year. So yeah, I think that's cool. uh, definitely get involved with the uh, the Xbox thing on Patreon. That's going to be cool. Yeah, so there's a link for that in the description. More. You can see what you get. So goodbye, everybody. Good night.